It's a glorious day. What's up? And welcome back to another unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today, we've got the XMG Neo 17. I've got it in this box down here. I'm going to show it to you. It's super exciting because this is a water cooled laptop, the only water cooled laptop that we've had in many, many years. Um, there was an old water cooled laptop from Asus. Uh, but it wasn't very good implementation. The portability really wasn't there. And um, yeah, it didn't really take off at all. And I'm hoping this one, the implementation is gonna be better. Um, you'll have better functionality both on the water cooler, off the water cooler, and it'll be convenient enough for everyone to find it more useful. And hopefully the performance gains from the water cooler will also be awesome and massive. Now I have seen um, other people with this laptop get over 24,000 in time spy before, but I haven't, I don't know what they did to do that. They may have, you know, edited drivers or anything like that. So I'm not going to be doing to that level of extreme overclocking today. I'm just going to use whatever XMG does on their back end, right? However, they send it to me, um, with basic updates, driver updates, all that. And we're going to see how much we can overclock it using MSI Afterburner and see if we can break 24,000 or not. I'm hoping we'll at least get 23,000 as a baseline. Um, hopefully 23 and a half. I don't know, maybe 24 though. I'm hoping 24. That's my true hope. If we could buzz 24, that'd be amazing. I don't know if we'll be able to do that in time spy GPU score. I don't know. Now the water cooler focuses mainly on the GPU performance. There is some benefit to the CPU, but don't expect uh, as high a CPU performance on this machine as you do on some of the other laptops that have more of a focus on cooling the CPU better. So I see a bunch of people on the chat already hopping in. What's up, Hood Hustler, Asmat? Uh, okay, so Xborg says he had a smell coming from his XMG Neo. I don't think I've had any smells coming from mine yet, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, can you purchase an XMG uh, stateside? So you can buy this uh, laptop from a few different manufacturers. Uh, basically, they're rebrand resellers throughout the world, right? You have um, XMG that's located in Germany. They focus mainly on European sales. Uh, there's, I believe, PC Specialist. And I think Cyberpower PC is also doing this. And then, of course, Electronics is another option. Uh, and there are links to, I believe, all of these places on my sheet. I'm not sure if all of them, I don't know if PC Specialist is there, but I know Electronics and XMG are both on my laptop list. And I do wanna talk about what are the top competitors against this laptop before we get started, okay? So before we get to the unboxing part, let's talk about what are the primary alternatives that you're gonna be thinking about maybe buying this XMG Neo or these other laptops. I've already pulled up uh, about seven other laptops we can do a quick and dirty comparison with. So this is my laptop list. And this list right here has every single laptop with an RTX 4000 series, as well as a bunch of RTX 2000 series uh, being available that are worth potentially buying because they have a really great sale, okay? So um, look in here, the biggest thing about the XMG Neo, with people who are interested in the XMG Neo, right? They want high-end GPU performance. So that's the primary thing that I have selected for the comparisons here, okay? So uh, this laptop list, you can sort it by price, you can sort it by laptop rating, you can sort it by thermal design, you can sort it by display quality. Um, there's so many different ways you can sort and use this list. If I type in Neo, you can see here's the two XMG Neo laptops. You got the 16 inch, and you got the 17 inch, and they're almost identical. They're almost identical. They're not quite identical. They're 16 inches, obviously, and 17 inches. So the 17 inch is a little bigger, and the 17 inch does have a little bit more thermal headroom as rated by XMG themselves. I did get hands on with this when I was at CES, uh, and I did get to try the mechanical keyboard while I was at CES, and that is such a better keyboard than the membrane keyboard that they sent on this guy. Um, I just want to point that out right at the beginning here. I do definitely recommend getting the mechanical keyboard if you buy this laptop. Um, so this is the laptop that we're going to be looking at today, the XMG Neo 17. Uh, the 16 is virtually identical. I believe the same ports, same options for the most part. Um, but the primary difference is uh, being a 16 is chassis, there's just not as much thermal capacity because of the, you know, the heat fans and the heat pipes are not as big and 
I'm not sure exactly how it's designed it's precisely differently, but I just know the thermal headroom was like five watts lower or something, according to XMG Neo's, uh, sorry, Tom's sheet that he sent out. There was a slight difference in CPU performance, but the GPU performance on the Neo 16 and 17 were very similar to one another. So uh, what are the competition? Well, if you do want to buy the XMG Neo, let's go ahead and go show you the configure page. So if you wanted to buy this, you click on this configure button, you're gonna be paying um, I believe this is euros. I'm not an expert on all these foreign currencies. Anyway, uh, so you've got 4090 with membrane keyboard. Don't get the membrane keyboard though. If you're gonna buy this laptop, don't buy the membrane keyboard. Get the Cherry MX, all right? Wait, it's worth waiting for the Cherry MX, guaranteed, all right? Uh, so the base price is 2250. Um, you do get a 2560 by 1600 resolution display, G-Sync, 99% sRGB, so not a very colorful display. Uh, compared to the competition, which goes up to 100% P3 color gamut, which is much, uh, much more colorful, right? 100% sRGB is in the ballpark of like 80-ish P3 color gamut, a little higher than 80. I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna be we're gonna be testing the display today of this XMG Neo with my Spider 5 Elite. Um, we've got the i9 13900HX in all of these XMG Neos. You cannot get it with a cheaper CPU or the higher end CPUs, so that's a downside because um, basically this thing theoretically could be quite a bit cheaper if you could. Uh, you get two sticks of eight gig SK Hynix as the default RAM option, but you can switch this out for some other brands if you want to save some money or spend more money. And I'm not sure, right now they do not have the 6400 uh, DDR5 RAM available. It's not available yet, okay? Um, you will... Basically, there was a limited number of these. They sold out right away, and now you've got to wait for it if you want to get this. Or maybe you can buy this after the fact and put them in later because it does support it, obviously, right? If you can figure out which exactly 64 DDR5 6400 sticks you need to buy, uh, you should be able to upgrade that at a later time when those sticks become more available. You got RAM upgrades. You got SSD upgrades. Uh, you got a second SSD that you can put in here. You've got, uh, you can pick between different types of keyboard on XMG's website, which is pretty cool. Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211. And you obviously uh, will want to have Windows, probably Windows 11 Home or Pro, one of the two. But uh, standard 24 month warranty. Gotta love that, all right? Quick repairs within the first six months, it says. So if you have a breakdown right away, you get a quicker repair, wow. Uh, you get quick, you can upgrade the quick repair to be last longer for only 40, 50 bucks, or you can extend it to 36 uh, months. So three years for 149. Now I don't think this covers accidental. So just keep that in mind. No accidental coverage. Like we did, uh, have accidental coverage on the scar 16. Um, so that was nice. Now let's see here, uh, if we wanted to try to upgrade this to the 4090 version, where is that right here? So the 4070 version. Goes up to 26, 20, 40, 80 goes up to 33, 36, and 40, 90 is 39, 75. If we were to change this uh, to USD, I'm just curious, what is the value? $4,220 to get the fully tricked out version of this. Um, and again, you're gonna wanna get the Cherry MX keyboard too. I'm not sure where that is. Silent membrane right here. So it's $125 to get the, the mechanical keyboard, but I feel like it's worth it, all right? That is probably super worth it. That's a pretty expensive upgrade, but that would still be worth it to me. Okay, so what are the, what are the competition against this laptop? Um, real quick, let me just make sure chat is doing good here. Wow, got a lot of chat people here. Uh, do, 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 do. Checking, reading, reading, reading. Uh, you know, well, from a tongue fang is the actual manufacturer of these laptops. That's right. Um, and well, yeah. And so basically, so basically, uh, tongue fang makes these, uh, or, you know, well, basically makes these, and then these, these resellers will uh, put their branding on them and be the actual reseller in their area or their region. So they basically s s try to market it to that area better. Um, so anyway. I'm really excited about this, uh, primarily because of the overclocked liquid water cooled 
GPU. And I'm going to try setting that up today. It's going to be very challenging for me because I'm, I, uh, I will have to see how challenging it is, I guess. I'm just, just I'm a little intimidated of making myself into an idiot on live stream, uh, messing it up somehow. But I'm, I'm probably worried about nothing. Um, I glanced through the quick setup guide or whatever for the XMG Oasis, and it's not exactly the simplest thing and not exactly the most complex process either. But um, okay, Zephyrus Duo 16, I did a live unboxing of this recently, and it is a very awesome laptop. We've got a Ryzen 9 7945HX. With, uh, you can get this with a 4080 or a 4090. Price is about $500 difference between the 4080 and 4090 version. Um, all metal design, that's the big thing to hear that differentiates the Duo 16 uh, with some of the competition, as well as the dual display and the, the more forward facing uh, placement on the keyboard as well. Helios 18, this sucker is another competitor to the XMG Neo 17. It's got a monster QHD 250 hertz, 1000 nits LED, mini LED display. And it's not exactly the most portable thing out there and not the most powerful thing out there, but it's got probably the best display in an 18 inch laptop. We got the Razer Blade 18. Uh, this is my laptop of choice so far in 2023. I'm really enjoying this laptop and it's uh it performs well it has good balance of speaker and audio acoustics and uh it's got a really good display great webcam windows hello uh the keyboard feels good the touchpad feels good uh good port selection on here price is pretty expensive feels very premium though i i've been enjoying my blade 18 a lot uh the gt77 i've done several videos on the gt77 this sucker is primarily the, one of the number one competitors to the XMG Neo because the people that are looking at the XMG Neo are looking for the most GPU performance out there. And this is the most powerful GPU I have tested so far this year. And I'm hoping that on the liquid cooler today, the XMG Neo 17 might be able to surpass the GT77. Now, I don't expect that when you're on air, you're going to be able to surpass the GT77. The GT77 is on air. So yeah, I mean it's it's pretty it's it's pretty awesome. You got a 4K 144 hertz mini LED display on the GT77, uh, RTX 4090 175 watt, also factory overclocked, uh, higher than the standard competition for the RTX 4090s. i9 13980HX that is fully undervoltable. Uh, Legion Pro 7i and the Legion Pro 7 that has the Ryzen chip. Uh, these are also highly competitive with the XMG Neo 17. These ones are going to have you know no liquid air or no liquid option, obviously, on this. The display is about the same level of quality, though a little bit brighter on the Legion Pro 7i, but it's the same color gamut, 100% sRGB. Uh, similar RAM speed, DDR5, D600. Um, Overall, I think the Lenovo Legion also is going to come factory overclocked, though based that I'm saying that based on the information I have from the benchmarks I've seen from other users. So uh, definitely got some nice things about the Legion Pro 7 and Pro 7i. But the thing is, uh, they did have some noticeable backwards steps in terms of design and quality this year. The RGB lighting is worse. The touchpad is now plastic, which is super weird on a three thousand plus dollar uh laptop like how is that possible it's the only one that i know of over three thousand dollars that's on a glass touchpad that's absurd in my opinion uh and i believe still no windows hello i don't think so that's that's another issue um and on the xmg neo we do have windows hello i i have been using that anyway so those are some of the primary competitors there's definitely some other ones like the scar 16 scar 18 uh that you can consider as well and uh, you got the GE78HX. Those are some other honorable mentions to consider. But let's go ahead and switch gears now and get to the unboxing. All right. So uh, we have got the table already cleared and ready to go. All right. So this, I'll just show you from afar first. This is the box. Whoa. This. This is the box that everything was shipped in, okay? So you got the cooler in here, you got the laptop in here, you got the liquid in here, you got everything you need to get started. So first, we have the XMG o Oasis water cooler. So let me move the lights so we get a little better angle. And 
There it is right there. So this is uh, this is going to be the, the cooler. We're going to unbox this in a moment. Let's just get everything out of the box first so you can see what everything, what's all included. You got the laptop. This has got the uh, the power brick. It's a nice black mat, uh, box with no designs. It's very clean looking. Um, there's that. We got those two things. And then we've got our distilled water for our cooler. So we gotta take the uh, the bubble wrap out. All right. Shwam. So there's your distilled water, and you're only supposed to use distilled water in this. Uh, you're not supposed to use liquid cooling coolants. In any way, um, so just keep that in mind. So here is, I believe we're gonna use this to fill the water cooler, a little bulb sponge thing. It's like an, uh, it's like one of those ear cooler, uh, <laughs> ear washer tool things. <laughs> All right, uh, so then we got a microfiber cable here. And this is to, you can use this to clean up any excess water. Not sure what the brush is for, but they include a brush. All right, and uh, we've got a little stopper right there. And another little stopper right here. These can be used, I believe in the HDMI and USB-C ports. If you want to stop any water from getting into those near the water cooler port, which is they, they include those as a bonus. Though I don't think you really have to do that. Maybe during initial setup in case you do it wrong or something. All right, we got our water loop uh, right here. This connects the laptop to the water cooler. And now let's go ahead and get into the XMG Oasis. So this is the gonna be the, the water cooler itself. I did open this up, so what? So it's not gonna be quite packaged exactly, but I was just kind of trying to get a feel for everything I'll have to do with this thing. Um, but here's what it looks like inside the box. And so it's got its own little black shroud. Just like that, all right. So we're gonna set this down right here. We've got extra uh, O-rings. This will be in case uh, you need to replace the O-rings in your nozzles here or on this side, right here. All right. And uh, then we got an extra, a whole entire replacement for this head. If you need to replace the whole head, you've got a replacement. How cool is that? And then we also have a funnel this will help us fill up our water cooler, I guess. That's good, we're gonna need that. And we don't need, we, we won't need these. We can put these back in the box. And right now, while we're at it, let's go ahead and take this off. So these have little screw covers to prevent the water from leaking out if you're not using it. And right there, a little bit of water is coming out already. Let's go ahead and just put the new nozzles on here. So that way it's kind of sealed up again. All right, so these just screw on there. Do not use a wrench to over tighten these. You can break them, they're just plastic, you know? So just finger tighten them just a little bit, not too tight. They should be just fine at that point, all right? So if a little bit of water leaks here and there, it's no big deal, as long as it doesn't get down to any electronics that are active and turned on. Uh, 
All right. So, bingo, bingo, bongo. Still not sure exactly what this is for. That's interesting. All right, so um, next, let's take a look at the laptop. Let's put this stuff to the side for a moment. Here's the laptop. Whoa, boom. All right, so we got uh, some nice layered packaging here. We've got a foam topper. We've got an XMG mouse pad, which is pretty cool. All right, so there's the mouse pad. Nice and smooth, and you got a rubbery surface on the bottom. We'll use that today when we're playing games. And here is the laptop itself. It is wrapped in another layer. All right, and we've got a plastic wrap on top of this. Whoa. Whoa. And uh, notice that currently this is badgeless. There's no markings on what brand it is. So if you'd like a nice clean laptop with no branding, there you go. Um, you can see the ports on the right. We got ourselves an SD card slot, two USB 3.2s. We've got a vent port uh, with exhaust fins on the, the right and back. And notice there are big beefy ones, right? They're not smaller, thinner ones like some of them out there. Then we've got our water intake, USB-C, HDMI, uh, Ethernet. Unfortunately, the Ethernet is on the lower side, that, which might require you to lift the laptop up to unplug. We got a power adapter port. And then on the right side, I'm not sure what that is. There is a port right here, but I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't look like USB-C. Uh, USB 3.2, and then we got a mic port, uh, and then our headset port. So double, double ports here, which is nice if you need to do multiple audio in sources. Um, and when we open it up, just like that, shaboom, there's the laptop itself. And we got a nice microfiber cloth on the keyboard and the key uh, the touchpad is also very large and it comes with a cover this cover explains that you can deactivate half of the keyboard by tapping in the top right okay and if you tap in the top left it'll de deactivate the whole touchpad so you double tap twice on the top left to deactivate everything double tap on the top right to deactivate just the right half if you find that you're accidentally touching this touchpad on the right side. This touchpad is the second largest touchpad behind Razer. Like this is an enormous touchpad, very nice and smooth. And we've got a membrane keyboard here today. And this is the, uh, I believe the like European layout. So the, the, the enter key is a bit different. And then the shift over here has a backspace so I have to be careful when I'm typing not to press shift, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but it's okay. It's whatever. Um, all right. So closing the laptop for a moment, putting that aside. Inside of here, we have our power cable. All right. And then we also got a bottle opener from XMG. That's pretty cool. Uh, looks like we have Tom in the chat, at least, I hear. All right. Uh, so everyone say hi to Tom. Looks like they included the stickers. They include the i9 NVIDIA sticker. This is kind of funny. Uh, most people, I think, don't want these on their computers, but some do. It just depends. But um, you got GeForce RTX. You got the Core i9, you got the Nahemic audio sticker, and then you even have the G-Sync sticker. So 
I like that they're not on the laptop and you can choose to put them on there if you want. I wonder if uh, that's going to be the standard or not for all XMG laptops. That'd be cool if that came standard just like that. All right. Looks like we've got a flash drive. I'm not sure what the flash drive is for and or if it's going to come on every single one. I'm assuming this is a backup of drivers at least, maybe even a backup install of Windows. Tom, are you in the chat? Can you clarify? Um, I'm going to refresh chat. Chat doesn't seem to be refreshing. There we go. Okay. There's Tom. Okay. So Tom, the stickers, uh, has been standard for years with XMG. Okay, cool. Uh, and what's on this thumb drive? Can you clarify what's on the thumb drive? Um, and is the thumb drive standard or is that something only I'm getting cause I'm a reviewer. All right. And here's the power brick. This power brick is very much like the Lenovo power brick that I've had. Uh, it's very thin, making it easy to pack into bags, uh, but it is very wide and tall. So it's not as small as the Razer power bricks, but it's quite a bit smaller um, compared to like the GT77 power brick. Every XMG unit gets the thumb drive. Okay, nice. Uh, I'm glad Tom's here now because he can help me um, not mess this up. <laughs> Um, but hopefully it's going to be easy enough that it's not going to be that bad. You know, like, like it makes, it's going to make this thing a lot easier for me to recommend if I'm able to set this up quite cleanly and easily. Like at this point, I have not set up the water cooler. We're going to be doing that live for the first time. I have never, I've literally never done it. Right. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting adventure and I'm, I'm going to be honest. Even me, a super veteran laptop guy, I'm pretty intimidated by the idea of doing the water cooler, right? I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up and damage something. So, um, and if I'm afraid of that, then I guarantee you the average user is gonna be at least a little bit cautious or a little bit nervous about it, you know? So, uh, yeah, so that's where I'm, I'm curious, how smoothly is this gonna go for us? And um, yeah, so, before we do anything else, let's take the bottom of the laptop off as we do here on these unboxings. Let's check out the internals of this laptop and then we will try setting up the water cooler, all right? How much is this in USD? Uh, it really depends on how you configure it, but the way this is configured, I believe is gonna be close to 4,000 or a little bit uh, under 4,000. Oh, did Moa do a super chat? Uh, thanks so much for the super chat donation, Moa. Dude, sixty six dollars is so much money. Thanks so much for the super chat. Uh, I appreciate the support from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Um, okay, that's a big that's a big donation, and Moa keeps keeps donating. It's crazy. Um, yeah, my chat was not refreshing. That's why that's why I missed the super chat earlier. Um, he said. I think this laptop will have a high score in Cinebench because of the water cooler. Yeah, well, we'll see. The thing is, the water cooling loop in this does not go over the uh, CPU directly anymore. And so I'm not expecting as high of, of uh, performance. It looks like we just need a Phillips head screwdriver to take the bottom of this guy off. So we'll just go ahead and go all the way around here. So far, nice and smooth and easy. Uh, Tom, this is, uh, is this an all metal chassis? What parts of this are metal and which parts are plastic? It feels like the bottom is uh, metal here. Pretty confident the bottom's metal. I'm not sure. I think the top lid is metal. I'm not sure about the keyboard deck. I gotta say, it feels very premium being the, the bottom being metal. I've been doing a lot of these plastic chassis lately. It's nice seeing 
nice seeing some metal here. I, I think I think there are still plastic parts of this laptop though. Okay, so I think we're on to the last screw. And so far, all of these screws are the same size. So you may not have to worry about which screw goes into which hole as much. All right, so let's rotate the camera around. We are opening a door to Into the AM shirts right now. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, yeah, there is Into the AM shirts. Links in the description, 10% off if you do use the link. Um, and it does help support me as a creator if you do use it. But uh, I love their shirts. I'm going to try to order some more actually here soon. Get some more variety for the stream. Um, all right, so we're just going to try to get into the side here. Uh, no pop-up screw that I can see. So, but it's not like the gap. There's, it's not too tight, I don't think, for the gap. So we're just going to go all the way around. I am noticing it's kind of taking a little... The metal bits are taking some of the plastic off of my pick, though. So let's go to the front here. So far, so good. It's going across. It's good. Usually the rear of laptops are the hardest to, to take off. Let's see how this one is. Interesting. Did I get all the screws out? It's very tight right there. Yeah, all the screws appear to be out. All right, I think we're gonna to need to use one of these tools to get this back off. Oh, two screws at the cooler port. Thank you, Kai. All right, so we, in order to take this off, we gotta take these two screws right here off. I remember you mentioning that now that you, you said that. So there's two additional little screws for the cooler port. You gotta take these guys off. Oh God, I need a super, oh, I see you, Tom, no, okay. <laughs> I would have figured it out eventually. But uh, Kai's got me on notifications for my Apple Watch right now, so. All right, so that's why the rear didn't want to come off. Because you got to take these two screws here out. All right. Interesting. There we go. We're getting the back to pop up now. So part of this uh, back is definitely plastic. Hmm. Yeah, getting this to pop up around the cooler port seems to be tricky. <laughs> uh, XMG, uh, Tom, with, don't forget the screws at the water port. So I took the screws out at the water ports, but do I need to like push the laptop chassis forward? Because it looks like there's some catches here. And it doesn't, it looks like the laptop's kind of being held right there. Um, you know what I mean? Like, there we go. I think I got them to pop up. There it is. Okay, perfect. They kind of, uh, like the circles here kind of have to get pried around the, the, the these little guys were kind of stuck inside of the, the round holes. So not too bad now that I know how to do it. But if it was, if you were trying to do that without any help, that could be a bit of a challenge. Okay, so here is the internal 
laptop. All right, so shaboom. All right, so initial quick impressions are that you guys could definitely uh, maximize the space in this laptop a little bit more by putting in some more, like, I don't know. There's a lot of open space here. That's just, that's what I'm noticing right away. I feel like either you guys could make this laptop chassis thinner or you could put in like two more SSD slots or uh, bigger speakers or something here to maximize the usage of the space. That was kind of my initial impressions pulling it off here. But um, yeah, so that's just after like opening what, what, what have we opened up? 15, 20 laptops this year? This is the most open space I've seen in a laptop so far. T tell it to you, Will. That's right. Uh, yeah, so XMG doesn't design the internals, but this is still feedback um, that they can give to, to Uniwill, right? Like uh, they need to make this laptop this thick to get all of the cooling components in here, but the, the internal spacing of everything, I feel like there's potential to add more features here into this ch chassis if they're gonna keep it this large. Um, okay, so what do we got here? We got our down firing speakers here and here. And they're pretty beefy, large speakers. I'm curious to see how they sound. We got a 99 watt hour battery here, battery connector here. We've got our heat pipe going along this section. We've got our water cooling loop right here. I'll, I'll focus a little bit more on the water cooling and everything a little bit later. Let's focus on the, uh, the SSDs, the RAM, and the Wi-Fi first. So we've got a Crucial 5 Plus for our SSD. It's a one terabyte. And for our Wi-Fi, let me pop it open here. Looks like it's an Intel Wi-Fi. AX211, kind of what I was expecting. Uh, so it's an AX211 Wi-Fi chip right here. And you can swap that out or upgrade that if you want. We've got an empty, SS, uh, empty M.2 slot right here. And popping it around to the back. Let's take a look at what RAM we have. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this out. So we have the default. Uh, this is what comes with the laptop out of the box uh, on the default config at least. Uh, well, this is actually 16 gigs. I think it comes with only two eight gig sticks, but it's SK Hynix, uh, one RX8. Let me make sure it's in focus. 1RX8 PC5-5600. So not the fastest RAM, but that's faster than what we've seen in a lot of the units uh, so far this year. Almost everything from Asus this year is only doing 4,800, right? So. All right. Martin Warden asks, why does an XMG put displays with better color gamuts into these laptops, alternatively a mini LED display? I think they're losing customers. I like the XMG laptop. I would agree. I think they need to offer at least a 100% DCI-P3 color gamut display sometime in the future. Um, they really need to upgrade that uh, or give it an upgrade option. I would, I would appreciate at least a 500 nits display option too, if, if possible in the future, you know? Okay, so I'm like over exposing here, so hopefully you guys can see the internals a little bit better. Maybe that's a little too much. Let's go right there. Okay, so we've got this dedicated heat pipe. I believe this is hitting VRMs up here. I'm not sure, what is this hitting up here? Uh, I believe that's VRMs though. And then we've got our two RAM slots, upgradable, of course. And our heat pipe here goes all the way around. So we have two heat pipes hitting this, this uh, vent exhaust over here. We have three heat pipes hitting this rear exhaust. And you can see they each have their own dedicated fins. 
Uh, we've got two shared heat pipes going across to the GPU over here with two heat pipes hitting this fan exhaust and then three heat pipes hitting this exhaust. Our water cooler loop goes over all of this, uh, over mainly the GPU, right? This is our GPU right here. And it's uh, basically this is, the cooling solution for the water cooler is primarily focused on the GPU, right? Like these two shared heat pipes between the CPU and GPU are gonna help boost the CPU. But you need this fan running right here if you want to get your maximum CPU performance, even if you're on a water cooling solution. So if you're doing tons of CPU loads all the time, just know that you're gonna need at least one of your fans going pretty often at least uh, to maximize your CPU performance. I'm pretty sure that's a fair assessment, though Tom can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, we'll find out right here in a little bit when we get this thing fired up and going. So that's the internal analysis. It looks pretty promising in terms of cooling, uh, especially when you have the water cooling going. Without the water cooling, I would say this thermal solution is just, is, is very good or good, but, but not like an exceptionally great uh, thermal cooling solution. With the water cooling, it's gonna be, it should be exceptionally good especially for the GPU performance. And that's the key here, why this laptop could have the most powerful GPU out of all laptops because of this water cooling loop right here. Um, and that's gonna let the VRMs and the voltages and that the GPU hits go higher. Hopefully the clock speed can then boost higher and therefore hopefully we'll see additional levels of real world performance uh, that we haven't seen in some of the other laptops. I would, I would the other thing, you really gotta focus on is these RAM slots right here, okay? These RAM slots, they're upgradable up to 64 uh, megahertz on the, the RAM. So DDR5, 6400, and that is gonna potentially boost our CPU bound gaming performance uh, noticeably, okay? So let's go ahead and get the lid back on and get this thing fired up and going. So, well, I guess, uh, I guess before we fire it up, we gotta do the water cooler setup. All right, so we're popping in our sides, we probably want to start with the back. I imagine we want to make sure that our, our loops are, are, are round circles here, our loops are in, and then probably work from back to front is probably the way we want to go when reassembling this laptop. Um, if you don't do it in the correct way, you might get all everything popped in and then the loops are like pressed against the outside of the circle inside the laptop. It, I could see it foreseeably happening, but hopefully not. Anyway, so it feels like from the outside feel of this laptop, it feels very tanky and good because of the metal bottom and metal top. But this backside is all plastic right here, okay? So just keep that in mind. And this side thing right here, this appears to be, is this metal? That appears to be metal on the side. Yeah, I think this is metal over here too. So interesting mix of plastic and metal on this. Man, chat is going crazy. Uh, Sir Commander says, do you think AMD HHX instead of uh, Intel U, or wait, U, UHS chips in my laptops is a mistake? My Slim 7 did not benefit from an HX processor, but lost a lot of battery and gained a lot of temps. Um, I don't know, Commander. It really depends on what you're looking for as a user. The HX chips this year have a lot more cores than the H chips. And yes, they do, uh, because of the additional cores, they are also more power hungry, right? So uh, knowing that your, your CPU is gonna be more power hungry because of more cores, it's likely to get less battery life. It's something to keep in mind when you're buying a laptop. If you're someone who is like, oh, I need eight hours of battery life every day, like you're always on the go, you need eight hours of battery life, that kind of person is gonna need a different laptop uh, than this, you know? This is gonna need wall outlets uh, at least more regularly than eight hours, I'm sure. So, and that's gonna be true for all of the new i9s. I don't think any of the i9 chips this year are gonna do more than eight hours of consistent um, web browsing work type battery life. So, yeah.
All right. Man, Tom is getting out the big guns, the big words. Well, kind of. He's just, he's getting... XMG has a permanent representation office in Taipei, Taiwan, for product planning, testing, and purchasing. This gives us very early access to uh, research and developing and brainstorming and sample testing. Gotcha. Cool. I got more copy pasta. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're getting a book from Tom. It's great. Uh, well, we gotta, I got to give a shout-out to Tom. It was a pleasure meeting Tom when I was at uh, CES. He was just a very uh, knowledgeable chill dude that uh was very helpful in, in trying out the laptops so i'm very grateful that xmg sent me this laptop and so thank you tom and thanks for participating in this live stream it's pretty rare we get the brands to actually hop in and maybe it will happen more often as uh as my channel grows i wouldn't be surprised to see it so we got to put the last two screws in right here by the water cooler inputs. Right there. And right here. Voila, we're all back together again. It's time to set up the water cooler. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. So now is the uh, the trial of Brandon's uh, water cooling uh, handling skills, and it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I can feel the pressure mounting now. Um, no, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Uh, let's go ahead and here's the water cooler. All right. So the way this water cooler works is you take the laptop power adapter, you plug the laptop power adapter into the back of the water cooler, then you daisy chain this cable into the back of the laptop with the, power, uh, the water adapter thing here too. So you plug both into the laptop from this water cooler, all right? So the, I believe if we follow the XMG, let's go ahead and pull up the manual. All right, we're going to do this by the book. XMG Oasis manual. And we're going to just, I don't think it's too hard, but there are some steps that are uh, specific to that you want to do to make sure you get all the air bubbles out and all of that. So I'm going to see if I can get the manual. There's user manual. Okay. So here's the user manual. I went to XMG uh, Oasis uh, page on XMG's page. And I'm just going to go to the English version of this manual. And let's open that guy up. There we are. All right. So here is the X, the Oh, user manual is on the PDF on the USB stick from XMG Oasis. Well, I found it here really quickly anyway, so it's very easy to find, all right? So you can see there's a lot of different things here that you can uh, look at or read over. It looks like it's 24 pages long or 24 sections long. All right, so assembling. First step, we need to unscrew our initial caps and put our cap covers on. We have done that now. Then we need to connect the XMG Oasis with the laptop and get our power adapter plugged into the back of the Oasis. And this is before we plug in or fill it with water, all right? I believe that is correct. All right, so we need to get everything situated so that uh, it can pump when we fill it with water. So we'll do a laptop over here. We'll put the mouse pad down here. Let's go ahead and get our power adapter plugged in. All right. 
right. And so we're now we're plugged in there. So we're going to plug that into here. And we're going to take our reservoir and we're going to put it into the back of the laptop here. All right. You want to make sure that you're not uh, in there part of the way there. You want to make sure you're all the way snugged in there. All right. And it is magnetic. Okay. So, and when it gets in there, it's in there pretty good, but it can just, you can just pull it off. So you, you know, you're going to want to be careful not to have it pop off while you're, you know, pumping water through the system. All right. So let me change camera angle for a moment. So right now, All right, so let me show you the magnetic connector. So right here, this will come on and pop off just like that, all right? You don't wanna disconnect this when your uh, XMG Neo is pumping. Um, I'm not sure, I think it might automatically shut off if that situation does happen, but it's still uh, not ideal because you're gonna get some water leakage at least. Um, and if it doesn't shut off, you might end up shooting water everywhere. But I'm pretty sure Tom could let us know about how that's supposed to work. All right, so uh, next. So we've got, we've plugged into the Oasis. We've plugged into the back of the laptop. Keep tubes uh, parallel when connecting. All right, so the tubes are parallel, parallel all the way back to the Oasis. Seal, so right, uh, Porsche says, love your content, mate. Thanks so much, dude. Uh, and thanks, thanks, uh, Tom, for the other super chat. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for the support, guys. All right, so uh, optional, seal the sh seal shut the USB-C and HDMI ports of the laptop. So that was uh, what these guys are. So if we wanted to, we could pop in these little uh, rubber guys. And why don't we just try it so that you guys can see the full experience. All right, uh, let me see, I gotta change camera angle, right? So, we got this little rubber guy. We're gonna put that over. It's, I, I would probably do this only the first time. Or maybe if you just don't plan on ever using these ports, you can keep this in here. It'll prevent dust from getting in there too. All right, so we got a little prevention there in case any water on our first attempt has any issues. All right, so we're Reconnect it up again. Uh, what's up, Brett? Let's see here. All right, so place the laptop on a desk. Guide the quick release fastener to the water ports until it connects to the laptop by, by magnetic force. Make sure the lock is fully connected in parallel. If necessary, jiggle the plug a little bit until it fully engages. I believe it's in there. It is, it is not partially out or anything, you know? Um, all right. Connect the laptop's power adapter to the DC port on the rear of the Oasis unit. Do not connect the adapter to the wall power yet. Oops, we already did that. Let's go ahead and unplug that. Okay, we're unplugged now. Uh, all right, connect the DC cable from Oasis to the DC port. Now connect the power adapter to the wall outlet. All right. Choosing the right kind of coolant, we recommend using industry grade Oh, here, uh, let me go ahead and show you where we're at here. So we've done all of these steps now. Choosing the right kind of coolant, we recommend using industry-grade distilled water on the XMG Oasis. Other solu liquid solutions are specifically made for PC liquid cooling are not recommended because of their chemical additives, okay? So the, this, the chemical additives might accelerate the wear and tear on the materials used in the XMG Oasis, uh, and especially some of the plastics, all right? So you really wanna use distilled water, not tap water, not mineral water, or any other food source, uh, not even as a test, because once it gets contaminated, it's in there uh, for a long time and can use, you know, so don't, don't use different kinds of coolants, don't use different types of water, only use distilled water. And ideally, I believe you want industry grade distilled water, which is stuff like this. So, um, this is the industry grade distilled water that we get with 
the XMG Oasis. I'm assuming this comes with a normal Oasis. I'm not sure though. Um, Tom, can you answer that? Is this automatically included in all Oasis orders? I would hope so. All right. You should never fill in with tap water. Right, 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 okay. All right, inject liquid into the XMG Oasis. Open the refill port on the main unit. All right, so we're into our refill port section now. So uh, let's go ahead and zoom in over here. There we go. All right, so this is the refill port right up here. You can just use your fingernail to get that guy up and off. All right, and we've got We've got a little funnel. This comes with the XMG Oasis. Uh, so there's the funnel. All right, and there is like, there's supposed to be a little measurement thing in the front. It says, observe the water level through the vertical lens on the front of the main unit. So pour liquid until the water level reaches maximum line near marked near the top of the lens. So uh, maximum, optimum. We don't have any water in there. I'm not seeing any indicator of the level, but I can see the minimum and maximum in here. I see those little notches. So uh, we'll have to see if we can see where it is when we start filling it up here. Okay, so um, bingo. Do, do, do. Verify that the water tubes of the XMG Oasis are firmly connected to your host laptop before proceeding. All right, so once we've reached maximum, then we can turn on the Oasis, is basically what I'm seeing. So observe water level through vertical lens in the front. Verify the water tubes of the XMG Oasis are firmly connected. Press and hold the power button. All right, so uh, we are ready to fill it up to the maximum level, I believe. Okay. Will there be a problem connecting to Oasis if a laptop stand is used? Oh, interesting. I don't know. Uh, what was... <laughs> Tom, you got to give him a better answer than that. Okay, so I'm going to use this little uh, filler tool. You could use like a, a another tool or something, I think. But this way I am not going to spill anything. I'm probably going to have to get a bottle or, I don't know, I'll have to get something else probably to fill it. Let me try to give you a better camera angle of this. All right, so uh, basically right now, I'm filling up by using this bulb to transmit water from one to the other. I don't know if this is really the optimal. You could probably pour right into here, but it's a little bit riskier. Okay, so I'm gonna look for the water level indicator on this thing. It's kind of hard to see. Tom, is there something that I should be looking for? Maybe I gotta use a flashlight. Oh, okay, so we're, right now we're about 80% full from what I can see. Uh, we need to go a little bit higher. So using a flashlight, I can kind of see in there and see where we're at. I kind of wish there was a bit of a better light or way to see it. Go to. All right. Two six wants to know how much I paid for this laptop. I didn't pay for this laptop. XMG sent it to me. 
All right, so we're at the maximum line now, or just a hair underneath the maximum line. And now we're gonna check our instructions again. Observe the water level through the vertical lens. All right, verify the tubes on the XMG or Oasis are firmly connected to your host laptop before proceeding. Then you press and hold the power button on the XMG Oasis for five seconds. The power button will blink in purple color, indicating that it has entered liquid input mode. During this mode, the pump will work to push water from the reservoir into the cooling loop. The water level behind the front lens will drop and additional liquid and add additional liquid until the water level stabilizes a little bit below the maximum line. All right, so next is to press the power button for five seconds. Oh wait, now we gotta, we gotta re-plug in. All right, we're plugged back in. All right, now we gotta press the power button. Two, three. Should I, should I, let me restore the reservoir cap just to make sure, I don't know. I don't want any water shooting anywhere. So, I don't think it would. But one, two, three, four, five. I hear it. There it goes. We are. We are going. It's moving. I can hear it flowing. Here, I'm gonna move the mic. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right. Um, all right, so Oasis will automatically leave liquid input mode after a few cycles. Press and hold the power button again for five seconds to repeat this operation. Running multiple cycles might help push all remaining air bubbles out of the loop, resulting in quieter operation. When everything is done, recap the refill port, check all the connections of the loop for any residual leakage. There should be no there should not be any liquid drops on the chassis or on the surface below. All right, so just checking to make sure we don't have any leakage. I see no leakage, no water going anywhere. That's good. All right, so... Beautiful. All right. Brandon got water shooting phobia. Oh, a little bit, <laughs> you know, water and electronics have a history of not really getting along together too well. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just cautious, you know, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to be very similar to what a lot of users out there are going to be like, you know, wondering about, wondering about their laptop. They want to make sure it's safe, you know? So all right, so we are not quite to maximum yet. We gotta go a little bit more. But you know, this doing this has certainly been not bad at all. It's been pretty easy to do. So using a flashlight, I can kind of see where the water level is pretty clearly. All right, so we're just a hair under maximum now. We'll replace the water there, take this water out, and voila! Haha, <laughs> okay, I think that's, that's good. We're making good progress here. Do you need to use the ear cleaning device for filling? No, I don't think so. You could use something else uh, to fill it or just be very careful when you're filling it. Uh, XMG always swallow, make the leave liquid input mode, okay? When everything is done, recap. The refill port, check all connections on the loop for any residual leakage. There should not be any liquid drops. Uh, make sure your laptop and XMG Oasis are connected to an external power and the water tubes are firmly attached. Power on your laptop and make sure the Bluetooth is on. Okay, so we're ready to power on the laptop. We'll turn our XMG Oasis to the side. We'll put our bottle down. We can put our refill tools down. Uh, and Tom, what's the brush for? What's the brush for? I'm curious why you guys uh, included that. All right, so pressing the power button there.
Leo says, is this a water-cooled laptop? Yes. All right, so I just looked at the Windows Hello, and it logged me right in once I looked at it. Uh, XMG Oasis gets quieter when all the air bubbles are pushed out of the loop, but this might take a little while and take some manual work tilting the box, but the pump is always audible. So uh, for the for the uh, getting the air bubbles out, I saw in the manual it had some recommendations to like tilt the thing side to side or something like that. I think we're about to get to that point, but uh, all right, so going into... Let me reposition the camera here. All right, and voila. There is the 17 inch 16 by 10 display. All right, so we need to go in and we're gonna to need to make sure that our Bluetooth is enabled. Bluetooth is on. All right. Um, so press the power button on the XMG Oasis unit. The indicator of the button will start pulsating the blue color. Uh, well, we already right now it's purple. So, interesting. Press the power button next to the Oasis unit. It's going to start pulsating a blue color. All right, so I'm going to press it. Nothing happened with a quick press. A long press. Uh, I'm not seeing much happen there, all right? Um, uh, I didn't quite do a full five second press, I don't think. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Interesting. I'm just getting the solid purple status from the, from the XMG Oasis. All right, so open the control center on your laptop and find the XMG Oasis control module. All right, well, let's try getting to that point. We've got Wi-Fi enabled. We've got, or we got Bluetooth enabled. And so we know that, and then we want to get Control Center open. So this is XMG's Control Center. Let me check chat in case Tom's trying to talk to me. Will the Key 17 Pro have 128 gig? I'm not sure. Uh, repeat the process. Uh, I can hear the water cooler. It's kind of like um, like a soft rumbling sound. It's not too obnoxious and less obnoxious than loud fans for sure. Uh, but let's we're gonna see if we can get it to be quieter as we troubleshoot here, right? Um, all right, so we're into this section. I'm not sure where. It says to navigate, it says open the control center on your laptop and find XMG Oasis control module. All right, so I'm in, I'm in the control center here. XMG Oasis, XMG Oasis, we found it. All right, so here it is. Let me turn the light off back here. Got to turn that RGB down so that we can see the screen a little better. All right. Beautiful. All right. So uh, we want to probably connect, I believe, is what we're going to do next. So open the control center on the and find XMG Oasis control module. At first run, the application will pop open with a short tutorial. Press the exit button on the last page of the tutorial. So I believe we need to click... Click connect, yep. Oh, it's showing the cooling system already. Are we already connected at this? It says in co is connectable. Uh, so here's a tutorial.
I think we need the blue to to be blinking blue. Press the power on the XMG Oasis for one second. The LED will pulsate blue. Press and hold the power button for five seconds until the LED pur goes purple. Okay, so uh, if you press and hold the power button for five seconds until it grows purple, then it's going to be an automatically running at default speed. So that's what we have right now without any Bluetooth or data connection to the laptop. But we want to be able to control it with the laptop, right? So... Looks like we need to probably unplug it and plug it back in to get this thing to connect. Maybe the system was connected to a different Oasis unit. Click reset in control center, then open Bluetooth settings and windows and connect there. Okay. So you say click reset in the control center. Interesting. All right. So we're going to hit reset. All right. So we've hit reset and then in Bluetooth, We want to connect to what? Uh, let's see here. So I have clicked, I went ahead and clicked the reset button right here and it says status disconnected now. All right, so we're not connected to any laptop with it. That's good, right? And then we want to click connect or we want to, now maybe we can. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now it's flashing blue. We are flashing blue. It says device is ready. We'll click connect. And all right, click connect button. We'll pair with your laptop via Bluetooth. Uh, I'm guessing we need to go in here and we need to connect. Which one of these do we need to connect though? Is it USB receiver, Tom? The Oasis unit is flashing blue now. We have a blue flashing light, which is what we need. So in the control center, it says open the control center, find Oasis control module. At first, pop up control, click connect. It'll now pair with your laptop via Bluetooth. Windows, in Windows Bluetooth mode, you can find Oasis and click add device. All right, well, we'll see. Did we see anything with Oasis? It says cooling system. I'm guessing that's it. <laughs> cooling system is now connected. Can we connect? It says is connectable. That's not connected, right? Um, so we're still flashing blue over there. It says the cooling system LTC is con is paired here. Drop down menu and control center. All right. So drop down menu in the control center. Oh, right here. Then we hit connect. Ah, okay, so that's something you guys can optimize for your software. You have to select it out of this list now that we've connected to Windows. And then we hit connect. And now we're connected. And we are in profile auto right now. All right. So sweet. So click on liquid input mode. The pump will now become slightly louder at regular intervals to expel the last air bubbles from the loop. In this mode, lift the XMG Oasis upright and tilt it carefully in all directions. All right, so we need to click liquid input mode. All right, so I clicked liquid input mode right here and now system is in liquid input mode. Now it says the pump will become slightly louder at regular intervals, expel the last air bubbles from the loop uh, lift the XMG Oasis left and right carefully in all directions. Perform this procedure several times until the operating noise normalizes. Okay, so next we're going to tilt our XMG Oasis around.
Yeah, certain angles are a lot quieter. Okay, I don't know if that's enough. Tom, what do you think? Um, is NVIDIA Optimus on or off? I don't know, this says Advanced Optimus. Uh, what laptop do you recommend? More, we're, gonna, we're focusing on the XMG today, Boro, sorry. Um, okay. You can tilt it up to 90 degrees, interesting. Um, okay, so going back to our manual here. After five minutes of normal operation, check all connections for fluid leakage. If leakage has leaked out, shut down the laptop and check the connections of the cooling unit. Water expands as it gets hotter. If you fill over the optimal line, increased water pressure may cause liquid to push against the refill port cover, causing leaks through the top of the main unit. So if you're leaking out the top of the unit, you overfilled it. Um... And the XMG Oasis module, click disconnect button. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and disconnect it here. So right here, we're going to disconnect. We are now disconnected. Oh, and I can, I can down the exposure too to make this a little easier for you guys to read the screen. There we go, all right. And, all right, so as a precaution, shut the laptop down or send it into hibernate mode. Sending it merely to standby mode is not sufficiently safe. All right, just in case you do leak any water, you want the laptop off um, or in hibernate mode if you want to stay, keep your windows where it's at. But hibernate mode basically keeps the power fully down, right? Um, and it takes a little longer to resume windows. Disconnect the power adapter from XMG Oasis and disconnect the DC cable from XMG Oasis from your laptop. So you want to disconnect first the XMG Oasis and then the laptop power cable. All right. And keep a, keep a handkerchief, tissue paper, or microfiber cloth handy in case there's small droplets of water that emerge during the next step. Remove them as soon as they emerge. Gently squeeze the lock mechanism on the back to release the connector and swiftly remove it from the laptop horizontally. Inspect the area around the water ports for any laptop liquid droplets, remove all lit fluids, keep all surfaces clean and dry. Now close the rubber seal of the laptop. This operation may cause additional uh, laptop. I think that's it for the old laptop um, seal. I think that these self sealing ones shouldn't need that. Okay, so yeah, it was for the old generation. Uh, this is, this is, that, th those instructions were for the XMG Oasis 1.0. This is for the 2023 version. And these ones are self-sealing, all right? It's still recommended to shut down the laptop, put into hibernate mode. Um, disconnect the power adapter from XMG Oasis, and then disconnect the DC cable from XMG Oasis. Keep a handkerchief for tissue paper or a microfiber uh, cloth handy. Grasp the magnetic pull plug firmly between your thumb and index finger and pull it horizontally away from the laptop. Do not pull on the tubes, only on the end piece of the tubes. Inspect the area around for any remain water ports, for any liquid droplets, remove all fluids, keep all surfaces clean and dry. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Whoop. Sorry guys, there we go. All right, so. Okay, so this is the next step. So we have, uh, we have disconnected the Oasis. We're not connected to it with Bluetooth. We're going to unplug the back of the Oasis here. And now I'm gonna raise the exposure a little bit. All right, so we're gonna disconnect the back of the Oasis. We have no power now to the Oasis, so it cannot flow any, no extra water can flow. All right, and let's grab one of the microfiber cloths that they gave with the laptop. We'll just put this down over here, just in case. And we're gonna grab it. So you grab it by the plastic ends and pull back. And literally no drops or anything came out. There was like a little droplet 
There still is a little droplet right inside of here, but it's super, super minor. All right. So now if we wanted to get everything back connected, we want to connect, we connect the water port magnetically, plug this back together and plug it back in right here. All right, so now the Oasis, uh, we can press on a tap, I believe, on the Oasis. So yeah, you do, uh, you press it for one second if you want to open it up. And then now that we've got it connected, we uh, just select the Bluetooth here and we click connect. And now we're connected to the Oasis. Okay, perfect. So we got all the functionality as expected going now. The question is, what's the performance lack? <laughs> okay, uh, no, but we also wanna understand the settings here for the Oasis. So, um, all right, so we don't need to worry about those. All right, so do, 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 do. Some things about what not to do. Transporting the laptop without draining. So uh, this has self-sealing valves on the laptop and the, the water cooling loop. Um, for example, you may not want to take the laptop into uh, an airplane where there's different pressure or let the laptop freeze, all right? Because if you let the laptop freeze, the liquid inside the loop may expand and come out or it may damage the water loop on the inside. So, um, all right, so you don't want, you definitely don't want to let any water get into the IO ports or ventilation. Though under normal use, I wouldn't expect that to be a problem. And uh, self-sealing is able to retain the water inside the loop. However, it is not 100% safe. The caps could leak due to normal wear and tear or improper handling. It could be opened accidentally during mobile use or transport. Even a single leak drop could cause water damage to the laptop's electronics. So um, you want to be careful with where you take the water. And, and so if you wanted to travel with it or go places with it, you probably want to drain all the liquid from the, the cooling loop by doing these instructions. Um, all right, so find a capture container, a glass or a bowl. Clear the desk, remove your laptop from electronics. Remove the refill port cover on top of the XMG Oasis main unit. Aim the quick release fastener onto your capture container. Connect the drain adapter in the appropriate orientation in the quick release fastener hose for perfect fit. Carefully raise the main unit with one handle, aiming the tubes into your container. Let the gravity assist the process when the liquid. So, move the refill port cover on your. Interesting. Basically, you drain with the drain tool, you drain the, the water loop inside the laptop, basically. And once you've drained the laptop, you're free to travel or whatever you want to do with it. So this is, to me, to me, the laptop, um, it says, for the sake of convenience, you can transport the XMG Oasis with the liquid inside against the official recommendation, but do this at your own risk. Make sure to adhere to the following advice. Uh, and this is for, this is not for the laptop. This is for the XMG Oasis. What about the laptop itself, Tom? Um, how important is it to drain it every time you like, like, let's say you're a college student, right? Like, let's say you're a college student, Tom, and you're, you're wanting to take the laptop into class every day. Do you need to drain the laptop before you throw it in your backpack to go to class? Or are you okay, uh, leaving the water in there with the self-sealing tubes, going to class, coming back, reconnecting? Is there any, is there any risk of the water leaking out in your backpack? Um... I feel like that is one of the most important questions 
uh, right now. And while you're considering that question, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and size compare this laptop versus some of the other ones that we've got here. Um, so here is, let me disconnect this first, disconnect this, and then we disconnect that. All right, so beautiful. Here is the Titan. So XMG Neo 17, and this is the Titan GT77. You can see it's quite a big difference in size with the Titan being much deeper and uh, about a half inch wider. Here is the Strix G18. You can see the XMG Neo 17 is a little bit narrower again. A little bit narrower and a little bit less deep. Here is the Blade 16. You can see it's quite a bit smaller than the Neo 17, both in width and in depth. And here's the Alienware M uh, M16. The M16 is deeper, but not as wide. All right. Um, so uh, Tom says, unfortunately, ultimately, it's a matter of personal consideration on how much one is comfortable and confident in using the laptop safely with on the move with liquid remaining inside. You may lean towards leaving the water in the laptop for short mobile durations, but you have to take extra care in handling it for longer transports or prolonged mobile use. It is clearly recommended to drain the water. Okay. So... Yeah, to me, to me, that says this is not the ideal laptop for a college student, you know, that is going to be unplugging and replugging this thing in or anyone that's going to be constantly plugging it in and unplugging it um, and then transporting it, say, on a daily basis. This, this, to me, is a laptop that is going to be awesome for someone who's going to primarily plug it in and leave it plugged in. Uh, let's say on your desk or in a specific place, most of the time. All right. So there's Windows. Hello. Let's see if it logs me in. Do do do. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right. A little bit slower than what some of the other laptops for Windows Hello were doing, but um, it got me in there. All right. So there we go. So right now we're disconnected. Let's see if we can go ahead and connect. I don't think I pressed the power button on the Oasis. You have to hold the power button for one second. There it is. All right, now we're gonna connect. Now we're connected. All right, do we have RGB on this? Or not? I don't see any RGB. Um, okay, so you have very quiet, quiet and balanced. For the fan profile on the, on the water cooler. And there is a fan inside that water cooler. That's how it works. All right, uh, let's see here. So I think that covers everything from I think that covers everything. It's interesting that they don't really have tips here, but I'm guessing we're, we're going to try leaving it on auto, or I guess, Tom, if you can tell me what the best profile is you want me to do it on. Should we do uh, 
Application profile, should we do overboost? And for the XMG Oasis, leave it on auto or balanced? Seems like balanced is the lo loudest. Can you hear it? So I'm gonna put it to auto and then here's the audio. I'm gonna be about uh, one foot away from the XMG Oasis. I'm gonna set it to balanced. I think during this initial startup phase, it may be a little bit louder as it gets everything going. And if you want, Performance profiles. Overboost. Okay, so we're going to go to overboost in our performance profiles. All right, that's going to be our, I think, our maximum performance setting. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the XMG Oasis uh, thing here for the control center. Beautiful. All right, so under general settings, we have a Windows key lock, disable pop-ups, um, number pad lock, FN lock, touchpad toggle, enables the toggling in the corners of the touchpad, powered USB when in hibernation or shutdown, so you can use this to charge your phone or something while the device is off. Device manager, you can disable and enable Wi-Fi, wi Bluetooth, webcam, and the touchpad. GPU settings, we have NVIDIA uh, Optimus disabled, all right? This option disables NVIDIA Optimus on the internal display. On equals direct graphics connection is off. Off equals NVIDIA Optimus will have graphics from iGPU to GPU requires a reboot when switching. So this basically puts us into, I believe, dedicated GPU only mode right now. So that's probably the setting we want to test with. You can remap some keys if you need to. Under the performance section, you have your performance profiles, balanced, enthusiast, and overboost. Application profiles, you have uh, the same thing. Here's our XMG Oasis control. Should I leave this on auto? Advanced Optimus is currently on. Left, switch left equals off. So you're saying that I have it, it's, it's showing as it being off. That looks like it's on now. Oh, you, we want to disable NVIDIA Optimus. Yes. So I'm, I'm guessing leave Oasis control on auto. Okay, I will leave the Oasis control on auto. So that makes this thing a lot quieter when it's on auto. We'll have to see how loud it gets. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of this laptop here, all right? So, looking at the keyboard, we've got a membrane keyboard here. I highly recommend getting the Cherry MX keyboard instead. It is a much better experience, in my opinion. Now, let me, it's kind of hard to see the backlight with my studio lights here. Um, so let me go ahead and turn my lights off and hopefully we can see the backlight a little bit better. There you go. So you can certainly look and see the keys, but this is probably the probably the dimmest backlight on any laptop so far I've tested this year. Um, the keyboard itself with a membrane keyboard will work, but I don't know. This these keys this doesn't this doesn't feel that good to me. It feels okay. Like I. This is probably the worst keyboard I've tested this year so far. Um, but I liked the Cherry MX keyboard that we had in uh, when, I, when I was at CES. That one is a much better keyboard in my opinion. Um, this one will work if you end up buying a laptop with this layout, but it is not a high-end keyboard and not that good. At least you have good functionality. You have a full-size number pad over here on the right. Um, so full size number pad, that's good. You got a lot of functionalities with the FN key and all of the secondary functions on the keyboard are lit up. 
which is good. But like I said, I can barely see the backlight keyboard. It's just not that stylish or very premium feeling for a almost $4,000 laptop. So that's where I would say uh, get the Cherry MX keyboard and then you at least get your money's worth, you know? Highly recommended to get that Cherry MX keyboard. Uh, well, I guess we should also look at the rear lights as well. There is some rear RGB. Um, yeah. I'm an idiot. You got to be careful when you're moving the laptop. So you got to remember this thing's got a water cooler attached to it. We have a little bit of water leakage here on the back. Not too much, but there is some there. So let me grab a paper towel real quick. Okay, so one paper towel will easily absorb all of this water. Um, that said, I'm guessing what we had is the connector came undone just a little bit there as I was trying to turn the laptop around, or we had just a little bit of water leaking um, for a little while. All right. So, anyway, the RGB on the back is, let me go ahead and turn these lights off again. You can see them, they've got these little RGB light bars on the left and right sides. It's not that bright and not that noticeable, but I'm glad they have them. Uh, I kind of think they need to add a little bit, they need to, they still need to revamp them, I think, to be cooler. So, all right. Let me get the lights back on now. I mean, my take on this laptop is definitely that this is not for someone that is, um, you know, looking to get the most stylish, most premium experience. I think this is a laptop designed for someone who wants the most possible performance. So that's what I'm really concerned with here. And a little bit of water leakage like that is not that big a deal, but this is why you gotta be paying attention to your, your plugins and make sure everything is seated correctly and you don't want to have the thing running and then you lose a lot of water like that, right? Um, 4K screen option, no, Chris, this only has a QHD uh, 16 by 10 and we haven't yet to test the display. Let's go ahead and do our flex test on the laptop. So let me zoom in a little bit. So it feels very firm, very firm, going around, a little bit of flex here, very firm, very firm, a tiny bit of flex there, not much, extremely firm, extremely firm, extremely firm, very firm, a tiny bit of flex here, a little bit of flex in the middle. Honestly, that's some of the least amount of flex I've seen in a laptop. That is very rigid, coming through the middle. Very little flex. Uh, overall, very minimal flex for a middle of the laptop. I'm being honest. That's that's very good rigidity. I'm impressed with the rigidity on this machine. Um, now, let's see if we can do the uh, deactivating half of the touchpad. So the way this was supposed to work is you tap on the right over here, and it should light up the light. There it is. Now, this part of the touchpad no longer works, and this part of the touchpad still works. So, and that is correct what's happening now. So you can see my mouse working here. I go to the right side and it doesn't do anything. All right, and then we can double tap on the right over here. Or sorry, we can double tap on the left side over here. And now the whole touchpad is disabled. It's just an external mouse now. Um, so if you're getting accidental touches, that's gonna help a lot, help prevent that. Um, All right, so.
Going through, continuing through our control center rundown here on the laptop. We've got keyboard backlight customization. We can do different animations with wave, breathing, a static color, um, a mixture of colors and flashing and musical based. I'm guessing that's based on your audio of the laptop itself. Yes, so it flashes with the audio. And uh, we'll just leave it out wave and highest brightness. Okay. You can also customize the light bar in the back to be different colors if you want it to be blue or whatever, but it's kind of hard to see those light bars. They're not very bright, if I'm being honest. Okay. Uh, battery, high capacity mode. Uh, this has high charging speed and maximum capacity. Other profiles might extend the life of the battery over the years. Balanced mode. Ideal balance between battery capacity and life. Uh, I'm guessing, interesting. Eco mode, balance mode. Windows is still gonna show 100% capacity in balance and eco mode. Though it's gonna limit the actual capacity of, that takes place in the background on the firmware level and not visible in the operating system. So I'm guessing you'd be able to see the wattage on your like HW info. But I'm curious how, how what each one of these is. I'm assuming high capacity is 100%, balance mode is probably like 80%, eco is probably like 50%. But we'll do high capacity mode for now. I don't know exactly what those numbers are. Um, Tom might be able to tell us. Here's our specs. We got an i9-13900HX. RTX 4090, we got an Intel UHD. 32 gigs of RAM, 5600 on the RAM, DDR5. And we got a one terabyte drive. Uh, here's some CPU specs and we got our about page, which is how you can change the English. All right. Okay, cool. So that's the overview of the control center. Right now in performance mode, we're in auto. We are connected to the XMG Oasis. I'm gonna to try to make sure we don't have any other leaks. I probably just didn't have the thing all the way in or when I moved the laptop, it kind of leaked as we were, uh, as we were going. So um, we should be able to go get going and let's try doing uh, our, com it's time to do our Spider 5 Elite and see how bright and vibrant this display is. And then we also need to do a speaker test. So let me grab the F Spider 5. Check, check the NVIDIA control panel for display modes. All right, um, let's go to, I'm gonna have to, to put in my code here. One second, everybody. Beautiful. I messed it up somehow, I think. A406. There we go. All right. Bingo. All right, so we're in on our Spider 5 Elite. Time to find out how bright and vibrant this display is. And. So display analysis, gamut and brightness. All right, verifying that we're on the brightest settings. Yep, we're all turned all the way up. We're gonna press okay. All right.
I'm definitely seeing some nice colors here. But at least XMG rates it as 100% sRGB. I'm not sure what the Adobe or P3 color gamuts are going to be, though. So now we need to turn our brightness down to zero. That's a very dark display. All right, and then we go up to uh, 25. I gotta say, I like this. Uh, I like this touchpad. This touchpad feels good. It's nice and large. The click is pretty responsive as well. Giz, what's your main laptop right now? I'm using the Blade 18 right now. And I'm, I'm really enjoying the Blade 18. Uh, Martin says, Brandon, why don't you sell the GT77? I didn't see it on your reselling list. Because uh, it's a review unit sent by MSI. I did not buy the, M uh, I did not buy the GT77. That's the reason. I can't sell the review units that... Um, <laughs> Companies send me, I have to ship the units back to the companies. Um, all right. Okay. All right. So we are done with the test. Let's see what our results were. So you got to keep in mind, as always, my Spider-5 Elite underestimates the color gamut by about uh, 8 to 9%, somewhere in that range. And right here, we've got sRGB at 91%. So that is the uh, stated amount, pretty much, for what they claim. Adobe RGB 72, P3 color gamut is 72. So that's about what I was expecting. So it's about 80% on the Adobe and P3 color gamut, somewhere in those ranges. Our brightness is 18 on the low end with high levels of contrast on the low end. 372 on the high end at 100%, which is very good, uh, but not as high as, say, the competitor panels today. So 372 is still very good. Contrast ratio is only 730 to 1, which is not as high as I would say would be ideal. Um, I feel like the contrast ratio should be a little bit better. Um, and I don't really see the low contrast ratio on the display itself, but it's interesting that it, it rated it so low. Okay, so here we are in the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, manage display mode. Here you can select uh, NVIDIA Optimus or NVIDIA GPU only mode. So we're just gonna select NVIDIA GPU only mode. Changing the multiplexer to integrated discrete might cause certain applications to crash. Would you like to continue? Yes, and we're gonna apply. See if NVIDIA Optimus is working here for us. Beautiful. We are now in NVIDIA GPU mode. All right. So. Whoa. The water cooler is going, and I'm just checking to make sure we're not leaking again. We're not leaking. That's good. Notebook check measured 965 to one. Interesting. Well, I think they use a different tool than I do. So they probably had a different color gamut range too. Um, this is a, just for reference, this is a very similar panel uh, in terms of color gamut and brightness to what we had on the HP Omen which is still a pretty, it's a pretty good panel, all right? Um, so now let's go ahead and test the speakers and then we'll get into some gaming. Uh, gaming and benchmarking is gonna be next after we test the speakers. So we'll change this real quick. Uh, it's really hard to type in my password um, on this keyboard <laughs> because of the uh, the placement of the left shift being a backspace. I always hit backspace instead of the correct key. 
All right, so right now the uh, XNG Oasis is spinning up, and I can hear it. And it's interesting because it, I would say it's louder than most laptops are on idle. And I, right now the laptop is not under load, so I don't know why um, we're getting the pump to go. We could, we, if we wanted to, we could tell it to go to very quiet or quiet mode. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and I might want to try turning it off for the speaker test here because you might hear the pump. To turn it off, is it best to just hold the power button or just to unplug it? I'm just going to unplug it for now. All right. Here we are, we're gonna do our speaker test. Here is Roar by Peter Spacey. Not by Katy Perry. This is Half-Life by Faded Aeon. La la la. Okay, so um, the speakers are surprisingly loud. Um, one of the loudest speakers I've heard this year. The clarity on the mids and highs, I think, could definitely be better, and the bass could come through better. It's a loud volume. It's kind of it's it's a it's a weird in between where you get really good volume, but I feel like the clarity and the bass and the mids and highs could all be better. So it's like I'm thinking, I'm thinking I would give it like an eight point three on the speaker scale, because the it's loud, but the mids, mids, lows, and highs could be better, you know? So it, it'll fill a room better than most, and you'll easily overwhelm any fan noise the laptop's making um, with your game audio or whatever movie you're watching or whatever. So um, I love that it's loud. It's just not a very premium-sounding speaker, but the loudness is phenomenal. So, okay. Um, let's see here. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug the Oasis back in. Press it for one second to turn the Oasis back on. There we go. And now inside of the control center, we will click connect. Oh, we're already connected again. It reconnected automatically. That's nice. All right, we're going to verify that our tubes are connected, our power cables and everything are seated. Everything looks good back there. Uh, let's go ahead and try out Cinebench R23. So. 
So I've got to say, we're uh, doing pretty good on getting through everything, considering we had to set up the water cooler. I'm, I'm impressed. You don't need to turn on the Oasis if you're not gaming. That's true. Um, but if you're going to do CPU tasks, this will also help, right? I got to say, the water cooler is definitely a little bit louder than I thought it was going to be. Because just because of the pump, you can definitely hear the pump. It's definitely not as loud as the loud whooshing of a fan noise on like max fans of a laptop, but it's a different type of sound. And I think it kind of reverberates a little bit on the table that we're on right now. So let's get, uh, let's get this going. Let's open up process lasso and we're going to just set our cinebench I'm going to start a run and I'm just going to set cinebench to be above normal priority so that way it doesn't get interrupted and we're able to utilize more of the performance all right and beautiful we'll close down everything else Accept HW info and Cinebench like we always do. All right. Beautiful. All right. So I, Tom says, I expect 28,000. 30 to 31,000. Uh, well, we'll find out. I'm not expecting insane CPU performance from this machine. Um, I think that it's important to recognize that this focuses almost entirely on GPU performance. The way this laptop is cooled, is thermally designed, it's really all about the, the, uh, it's really all about the GPU performance. The CPU performance is not going to be bad, but it's not going to be exceptional. The way you would think a water-cooled laptop might be, um, that said, can we... Is Intel XTU undervolting uh, unlocked out of the box? So we got 30,116, 30.1K for our opening score. And let's go ahead and reset this and just check out what, our, what our, we're pulling for our package numbers. We're doing 143 watts of power right now, 148. Our temps are hitting 87 degrees on the package, 80 on the, the cores. And our core clocks, if we open those guys up, we'll see if we have a good core clock speeds or not. Let's go ahead and run it again. We got 29.7K that time. All right, so our... CPU clock speeds, 3.99, 3.3 on our e-cores. This is pretty much what I would expect for a moderate level of performance. And our temps are not bad at all. We're not reaching thermal throttling levels. And we're doing a good amount of wattage through the CPU at 147. Obviously not as high as what we saw on stuff like the GT77 Titan or the GE78. Those are doing like up to 200 watts initially, and then they throttle down. But the bigger question is, what's this going to get in like a 10-minute score? And we're going to do, if we can, a basic undervolt. Uh, okay, so uh, Tom says, Intel XTU undervolting is not unlocked yet. They're working on it. Okay, interesting. So uh, we're going to do a 10-minute test without undervolting then if it's not unlocked. Um, just know that with unlocking it, I would expect this number to go up by 5 to 10% maybe even more, depending, right? If you get a good silicon lottery, it might go up 15 or 20%. So um, you could get into like the 35, 36K range with a, a really good unlock um, or under, a really good undervolt, sorry. Um, looks like we're also underexposed a little bit right now. Okay, so we'll do that. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and get our 10 minute test in and see what we get for a 10 minute test and what we get for our averages. We're also gonna reset. We just reset. So we're gonna be able to see what we average for our temps and our clock speeds during this 10 minute test. 
It's going to be very interesting to see. See if I can get everything up on the screen at once here for you guys. And Cool, so we got our test going. So far we're doing 3.99 gigahertz on average on our P cores, 3.3 gigahertz on our E cores, just like on our short-term test. Uh, 88 degrees on our CPU package, 82 degrees average for our core temps. We're currently at 85 though. Temps are climbing up a bit right now. We need to raise the backup on the laptop, I also just realized. Let's go ahead and do that. This will increase the airflow just a little bit. And I can feel, I can feel the fans going and hear the fans just minorly. Interestingly enough, the, um, I would say the water pump is a little bit louder than uh, the fans are right now. I can barely hear the fans kind of doing a subtle whoosh. Yeah, so far we've not had any additional leaking, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're good back here. Everything's looking good. Um, so checking out our performance. We're doing all right. 148 watts is very good. We have not slowed down our wattage yet. That's good. That's providing us a nice solid 4.0 uh, 4 on our CPU P cores, 3.3 on our E cores. And we are now th almost three minutes into the test. So if it is going to drop in wattage, I would expect it to drop in wattage sometime soon. Um, XMG says, Brandon, before you go to Gaming Benchmark, check out the display modes in NVIDIA Control Panel. Uh, what are you looking for in the display modes in NVIDIA Control Panel? Um, Tom, what do you? I went into the display modes in the control panel, and I switched it into NVIDIA dedicated mode earlier. I don't know if that's. I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, what are you looking for? Got to be a little more suspected. Uh, you can set it to NVIDIA GPU only mode without a reboot. I I already did that, Tom. I went ahead and did that. So it's in NVIDIA GPU only mode right now. Uh, do you have all the screws back in? Yes. We've got all the screws back in, including the ones by the water ports. So I saw a question earlier. Um, how do you lower your CPU temps in a laptop? Um, there's a, a bunch of different ways you can potentially lower your CPU temps. I would say, first of all, you wanna make sure your laptop fans are cleaned out. If you've had the laptop for a while, it may not be cleaned out. So get your vacuum out uh, or get a fan blower. Uh, don't let the fans spin, but get the fans cleaned of any dust and extra particles so they flow, air flows better including the air filters, uh, maybe on the bottom of your laptop, clean those out. And then the next step would be uh, consider doing a CPU repaste, CPU GPU repaste job. Um, if you've got bad uh, CPU temps, you could consider doing that. Uh, if you've got bad CPU temps inside of games, definitely undervolt. If you've already undervolted um, or your laptop cannot undervolt, maybe you can also change your power limits either up if your power, if your performance is very low, you may want to increase your power limits to increase performance. If your performance is good, but it's too hot, 
then you can lower your power limits with a tool like Throttle Stop or Intel XDU, or maybe sometimes inside of the laptop's control software. So if you've tuned your power limits, uh, you've set your CPU paste, you've cleaned your fans, um, another thing you can do in whatever game you're playing, if you have a 144 hertz refresh rate gaming laptop, you could set a frame rate cap at 144 FPS. So that way the CPU and GPU don't try to push any additional frames beyond 144. Um, just cause it, you, it might slightly improve your latency, boosting the frame rate up that high, but it's not really gonna help you that much typically speaking, and it will just basically cause extra work for your CPU and GPU. So if you set your frame rate cap to a reasonable level, that'll also help reduce your CPU temps. Um, another big thing is what fan profile you're in in your laptop software. If you're on max fans mode, that's gonna be the most optimal for temps, but it may be very loud. So you may not want to do that necessarily. If you can set your fan profile curve to the right level, that may also help boost your, uh, like you lower your power limits a little bit and then you raise your fan um, you raise your fans to turn on sooner or go a little higher than maybe like the balanced mode or something. That might help you give you a nice balance of performance, temperatures, and noise levels. So it really depends. But that's kind of like my, I guess my tips for if you wanna to try to maximize your uh, performance, reducing your temperatures, undervolt, clean fans, redo your CPU, GPU paste, uh, optimize your frame rates inside of games, um, Set your power limits, adjust your fan profiles, make sure you're in the right fan profile for the right performance level you're looking for. Make sure you're plugged in to, um, to the wall. Um, I think that covers pretty much all of the tips I would have, I think, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze this. We are two minutes and 50 seconds in. Our CPU is a rock, st rock solid steady. 4.0 gigahertz on the P cores across all of the P cores, 3.27 to 3.29 on the E cores for our seven and a half minute average so far. That's phenomenal. Our core temperatures have averaged 86. I love to see the average being below 90. And right now we're just a little bit below 90 on the actual uh, temperatures there. Our CPU packages are at 94, CPU package at 94. Uh, it's a little bit higher than I would prefer. Definitely would rather that would be like 90, but we're not thermal throttling uh, hardcore. We are hitting some thermal throttling here on some of the cores, but it's not like it's not like hardcore thermal throttling, right? It's We're averaging a good amount of wattage, and if we could just undervolt this sucker, ooh, we would definitely be able to pull probably 33K, I bet, in a 10-minute score. If, if, we have good, if we have good silicon lottery results, um, but probably 32K would be most, at least, for most people. Uh, see it, Brett. Can you close the water pump so you can see the fan-only performance? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I will do a couple of runs with the water pump disabled. And that's a very good question because a lot of these things, you know, we're going to see better CPU temps and performance when we're on the the water cooler right so but you're not always going to be able to be on the water cooler even if you do get the water cooler with you sometimes you're going to be traveling or or whatever you're going to be on air so yeah we'll have to see um so we're down to one minute left overall i'm i'm impressed this is doing um this is doing more wattage in the long term than the gt77 titan but the fact that we don't have undervolting support is going to kill the score compared to the Titan because it's more important that you're able to undervolt than you're able to get a higher, slight, slightly higher wattage. Um, now, once we get on air, I'm curious to see what our results are because that'll be very different. Um, performance profile key can be set to fan boost instead in the BIOS. Okay, so if you wanted to do max fans plus your liquid water cooler to really maximize your potential performance, maybe you're trying to do benchmarks uh, or whatever, then you can do max fans plus the air cooler. Like right now, there's a decent amount of air moving on this laptop. 
on the right side mainly. Um, so, boom. Oh, man. We almost broke. We almost broke 30K. That's the basically 30K, though. 29,999, <laughs> which is very good for a 10-minute score. That beats the uh, that beats the scar sixteen, scar eighteen. Um, very, it's that's that's very good. Uh, I will say that I'm impressed for a ten minute score, though it's not as good as what some of the laptops are when we undervolt them. All right. Without undervolting, though, that's a very good score. Uh, so we need to go. I'm looking to do performance, XMG Oasis. We want to disconnect. That turns off the Oasis, right? So now we're going to find out what kind of performance we can get. Uh, at least what kind of temperatures we can get with just air. All right. And we're still in performance profile over boost. Okay. So we're in the highest performance profile. And I'm not going to let the test go for the full 10 minutes. Let's just let it go for like two or three minutes and kind of let it saturate the heat. All right. Uh, Frank says 95C with water cooling. Uh, yes, this the water cooling loop is not over the CPU. That's not the focus of the water cooler. The water cooler's focus is on the GPU. So that's that's really the focus of today's testing. And we're about to get to that, right? We're not focusing on that right now, though. I'm expecting so I can hear the fans spinning up. They, they're much more audible now. Our temperatures are now hitting 95 degrees on our package, 89 on the core temp. We're doing 141 watts, which is a little bit lower, which shows that we're being thermal throttled downwards, which is what I would expect in a chassis like this. Um, Given the air cooling that we have, this is still pretty good results. Let's see how it does after like three minutes, right? That's what I want to see three minutes later. What's it going to be like? So let me put this Spider 5 Elite away again. So we're down to 35. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can maybe see this a little better. We're down to 135 watts. Our average is coming down on our wattage. So when we had the water cooler active, we were doing a higher level of wattage because we were doing 148 nonstop, which is a very good amount of wattage going through the CPU. 134 is still pretty good. My Blade 18 can only do 130, but my Blade 18, because it's undervolted, is still doing like 4.2 gigahertz, which is like 0.4 gigahertz higher than what this is doing right now. But it's also a higher silicon, because it's a 13950 HX instead of 13900 HX, which is a, a slightly lower bend CPU. Still though, um, undervolting is gonna tremendously help boost performance here when you look at our package temps and core temps. Yeah, so this is basically what you can expect with the XMG laptop for our CPU performance. 130 watts of dedicated CPU power when on air. Should be pretty close to sustainable, at least in air conditioned environments. And about 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz is what I would expect to average in these kinds of loads. So, all right. Bingo. All right. So, let's go back into the control software. And let's go into control center. There it is. I need to put a 
I need to stop this. All right, and let's go to XMG Oasis. Uh, let's connect. And it's automatically turning on the pump because it detects that we need a little bit more uh, cooling. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this to the taskbar. Beautiful. All right, so there's your Cinebench R23 performance, basically right at 30K. Let's go ahead and hop into some games now. Let's do Cyberpunk 2077. Here we go. Make sure Afterburner is running. Those speakers are loud and clear. I gotta say, those speakers are pretty impressive. Um, from a, like, if you're not too picky about your sound quality, the volume is very impressive. I'm going to need to turn this sucker down or I'm not going to be able to hear. You guys won't be able to hear me. All right, so. Videos. Full screen. DLSS on. Uh, let's make sure we're set to ray tracing on ultra. All right, there we go. Ray tracing set to ultra, everything set to ultra. Frame generation enabled, DLSS on quality. And I'm also seeing that we do not have our GPU utilization up here again. So we're gonna have to, oh, I have to just open HW info, that's right. And our GPU temp is also not being shown. So once I open HW info, you'll be able to see that. This is very good performance, out the gate at least. I wanna make sure the water cool is going. Yeah, I can hear the water cooler. Um, I can only hear that water cooler right now if I get up close to it. I can't hear it basically at all though right now. Um, sitting back here. If you were to position the water cooler like at the back of your desk, um, it would be very hard to hear it if you're sitting like, you know, a couple feet in front of your desk. Yeah, I don't think these FPS numbers are correct. I think I think frame generation must have set our DLSS to auto or something, but we'll see. Um, look at our GPU. It's boosting to 2440. I just realized our GPU clock is going bananas. That is super high, and we've not even over OC'd this at all. Um, DLSS was set, was set to auto, okay? So that's that's basically with DLSS on balanced. It's super annoying that Cyberpunk has this bug where it takes your setting and doesn't recognize it, or it changes it back to auto instead of to quality. So that was basically like running everything on um, balanced mode for DLSS. We're at 1600p. It says DLS is on qu uh, quality, but we need to go and apply it. And now it should be on, uh, uh, now it should be off. And hopefully now we can read that. Let me get HW info open too, so we can see our GPU temps and our utilization. So this is our GPU temp and our GPU utilization right here. Okay, so these numbers are a much more in line with what we're expecting to see. Um, 
There we go. There we go. All right. So for reference, let's do some reference numbers. All right. Reference numbers. What did we get in some of the other laptops? I'm going to pull it up, the benchmark results. So, let's see here. Hmm, what's the best one to pull up? We'll just do, we'll do the GT77 and the SCAR18 again. All right, so. Cy uh, Cyberpunk 2077, GT77 got 112, the SCAR 18 got 116. W what? Was that 130 or 136? I'm gonna need to scoot this forward a little bit more so I can see. It, I gotta go forward more. Uh, or make this bigger. 130.98, so 131, that is 14 more FPS than the SCAR-18 and 18 more FPS than the GT77, all right? We do have new drivers on this laptop compared to those laptops. Keep that in mind. Still, that is phenomenal gameplay, uh, phenomenal improvement. I know the Blade 18 also scored a bit higher. Uh, I think memory speed may be a real benefit in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, here is the results if you want to compare and contrast. So we have the GT77 112, SCAR 18 116 right here. Um, phenomenal. Let's move on to our next game. Let's go into Dead Space. I'm very curious to see Dead Space. Uh, Tom with the smiley face super chat. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, super chat ate my message. No, my problem is my browser sometimes is not refreshing the, the live stream chat for some reason. I don't know why, but that was, that was very good results in cyberpunk 2077. So that's a massive win. I'm pretty sure that's the highest result we've ever had in uh, in Cyberpunk 2077. All right, so DLSS is on quality. Our graphics preset is ultra. We want no vertical sync, 240 hertz refresh rate. This is all correct. All right, so we'll start the average. Try Nahemic for different audio profiles. Uh, I usually do that when I'm doing the speaker test, but I might do that here. All right, so our 1% lows are not doing amazing here. We've got 30 FPS for our 1% lows. That's pretty typical, though, of the i9 chips. Um, right now, we're doing 100 watts to the CPU, 166 watts to the GPU. Combined workload, 250 to 260, 270 watts. This is pretty common in these laptops. A lot of the laptops pull this high a wattage, but um, interestingly enough, the Blade 18 uh, pulled quite a bit lower wattage and yet had just as high of FPS. So I think there's some optimization on like the BIOS or firmware level going on here. Uh, either way, wow, our GPU temp is excellent at 65 degrees. Our CPU temp though is very spicy. So you gotta, you gotta keep in mind this liquid cooler really doesn't favor that CPU that much. It's really focused around the GPU. I think that's why they changed the liquid cooler uh, to just go around the GPU so they could bump these GPU clocks. Jiminy Christmas, look at that. 2,400 on the GPU clock. That is definitely the highest we've ever seen on the GPU clock in Dead Space um, on an RTX 4090. It typically is in like the 2,200, maybe 2,100 range. All right, so... Um, this thing is super impressive. All right, so uh, Lincoln says this, dude, this GPU is clocked 300 megahertz lower than a desktop 4090. The thing is, 
Desktop 4090 is not the same CUDA core count as this. This has the same CUDA core count as an RTX 4080 desktop card. So you really gotta be comparing this to a, um, a 4080. Okay, so Dead Space, we're walking. Let's see what we get. What's the memory running at? The memory running is at 9,500, which is, that's an OC. That is higher than normal. 9,000 is the typical amount, right? So typical stock would be like 2,000 to 2,100 in here and 9,000 on the memory. So we already have, we have a baked in, I have not overclocked anything, right? Uh, this is the baked in over OC from XMG. All right, so there's our average, 123, 32, um, popping over to the Blade 18. I really want to see what the Blade 18 results were because the Blade 18 actually did better. But uh, so this this is the results right here from Dead Space, Dead Space, right here. Uh, 112 for the Scar 18, 130 for the GT77. So this is a little bit behind the GT77. Seven FPS behind the GT77 here. Uh, I think that's because of the CPU here um, being lower wattage. Uh, though the GT77 didn't pull super high watts either. I think it's like an optimization issue or something. Very interesting results though. Um, this did beat the SCAR 18 though by about 10 FPS. I think the Blade 18 was right around this value, almost exactly. So there's Dead Space. Let's do God of War next. Uh, XMG says that OC is baked into the overboost profile. Um, nice. Bomberu just joined. How's it going? So in the first game in Cyberpunk, I think we had the highest score ever. In Dead Space, it was kind of a middle score because Dead Space was basically CPU bound. Am I testing with VBS disabled? I am not. Uh... I don't. I have not disabled anything, at least that I know of. So, what is what does VBS stand for, and how does it affect performance? Teach me, Tom. Teach me. I want to learn. <laughs> okay, so we want to do sixteen by ten, and we want to do quality for DLSS. We'll click continue. Virtualization based security. Okay, interesting. Uh, we have not we have not disabled core isolation. Um, yeah, we have not disabled that though. I I do disable that sometimes uh, if we are going to do Intel XTU or undervolting. But do you think that would affect a game like Dead Space? Because that might be that might explain the differences between um, some of these laptops in Dead Space pulling really high wattages, and sometimes they don't, which is just super weird. Anyway, all right, so here we are. God of War. Everything on Ultra, DLSL and quality. Let's see what we get. So far, some excellent FPS coming in here. Our GPU clock is much lower than it was in Dead Space. Only 21 megahertz on the GPU clock, which is interesting. 128 for our average. What does that, how does that compare to the competition? God of War got 124 on the GT77 Titan. Scar 16 got 116. So um, that might be a new record high. I'm not sure. I think the Blade 18 and the Omen 17 also scored in the 20s range. I'm not sure exactly what those got. We're going to have to do a giant side by side comparison between all of these. Um, this is an excellent score for God of War. Let's go into Dying Light 2. Z Balds with the $5 super chat. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks, Gizmo. What are your thoughts on the best for game streamers? I was looking between a 4080 and a 4090, was considering price around $3,300. Um, there's a lot of options that you can do for game streaming. 
I kind of want to do like, it's hard for me to know if an i9 is going to be better for game streaming or if the Ryzen 7945HX is going to be better for, for game streaming. I anticipate both of them are going to be pretty dang good because they're both multi-core um, chips. But I think the key thing is you're probably going to want to optimize your game streaming with something like Process Lasso so that like maybe one or two cores are just dedicated to the stream encoding and then the rest of the CPU can be dedicated to your gaming experience. Um, something like that. I, I'm not, I haven't played around with that, but I'm imagining that's going to be how you're going to get the best overall experience. Okay, so 16 by 10. VSync is off. NVIDIA Reflex is on. DLS is on. Quality. Frame generation needs to be on. We need to restart to turn that on. Um, what's the likelihood of an AMD version being released? AMD Phoenix is under planning RTX 4070 maximum. Ah, gotcha. Um, so Zbald, if I were to recommend at $3,300, you're probably looking at an Omen 17, maybe a Scar 16 with a 4080, but an Omen 17 with a 4090. Uh, you could go with something like the Legion Pro 7 or Pro 7i. Those could also be excellent. Um, maybe... Maybe you could get something like the electronics for that price, but you're going to have to get a stripped down version, like the 4080 version, maybe. Um, so it depends on which one you get. But the best display quality under $3,300 is probably going to be the SCAR 16 because it's got the mini LED with a high TDP and good performance and everything. So it really depends. Um, okay, so we I just want to make sure we're on ray tracing high quality ray tracing oh what why do we have to restart again guess we got to restart again um the alienware m16 is in that price range as well that's true but until i need to test the alienware m16 again um and see if the software is fixed because the current implementation of the alienware software when i tested it a month ago was just awful so it's like it's hard for me to recommend the laptop unless you're willing to tune the software. So um, I need to test it again, see if it got better. All right, so I think we're ready to do the benchmark now. Everything's on maximum. Ray tracing on quality, uh, DLSS on quality, ray tracing on ultra, fill, uh, frame generation enabled. That's how we test this game. Let's go ahead and see what we get in the benchmark. Ooh, our GPU clock is boosting really high in this one. 2400. 2370. That's really good GPU clock. The Zephyrus M16 is in that price range. I just I I think the Zephyrus M16 could fit someone who wants something super portable, but it's hard for me to recommend it from a performance perspective because it's going to be so much low lower performance. You really got to be focused on something that you want super portable, I guess, if you want to go the Zephyrus lineup. Um, otherwise, I'm just like, maybe it's better just go to a 4080 version or maybe even a 4070 and just save some more money. I don't know. Interesting. Mass just wanted to know why they're only going up to a 4070. And Tom said the risk to invest in a 4080 and 4090 main board is too high when you have to factor in the additional risk of supply chain bottlenecks on key parts, not just the CPU, but stuff around the CPU and delays. Uh, yeah, so the 40, 50, 40, 60, and 4070 this year use the same motherboard. And then the 4080, 4090 also use the same motherboard. So um, it's kind of like if you try to do one of the laptops you either want to go for a 4080-4090 combo and make that laptop all about 4080-4090, or you want to go for the 40-50-40-60 uh, range, uh, maybe 4070. You know, so that's basically it. It reduces or increases the cost a lot if you're going to try to split between those two. So you kind of want to focus your price segments 
you basically have to expect to sell a lot of laptops in both price categories if you're going to offer all five GPUs. Okay, so we're almost done with this test. 154. 154. That is a monster amount of performance here. Um, I think that's the highest we've ever tested. Let's see. Um, do I have dying light? So the SCAR 18 got 138 in this test. And the GT77 got 128. So 154. Oh, my goodness. That is a lot more than those. Um, that said, the Omen 17, the Blade 18 got, I think, 144. So this is just a little bit better than what we got with the Blade 18 and Omen 17. So this, still, this is the highest we've ever had in Dying Light 2. Um, let's see. I don't know if... So I tried installing my Microsoft Flight Simulator. I let it install overnight. But when I woke up and looked at it, the screen had turned black onto the flight simulator. So I don't know if this actually fully installed or not. If it did fully install, we'll test it. If not, we're gonna skip it and go to um, Hogwarts, I guess. How bright is this screen compared to other laptops and games? So this is a 370, I think we measured it 372 nits. So it's the same display as the Omen 17 or very similar panel to the Omen 17. Um, it's got a good color gamut. The contrast I wish was higher, only 720. I think the Omen had a higher contrast level. Um, that's gonna vary from unit to unit though too. Uh, I think this is, this is gonna be a great display. So it's still not done installing. We'll have to skip that one. Um, I did get PUBG installed this time. So I figured we could test PUBG for the first time. Um, I know some people were wanting me to test it, so let's hop into PUBG, see how it does these days. Um, what was I saying? We were talking about um, how bright is the display. So for indoor gaming, it's going to be, of, I think it's a, a suitable display. It's good enough for most gamers. Uh, it's not the high-end premium display, though, that we're getting in you know, like the Blade 18, that's not even a mini LED, then you jump up to the mini LED displays. You know, like the SCAR 16 and 18, those at least have 500 nits baselines, and then they go up from there up to 1,000 nits. And this is 372. Side by side, is it's pretty noticeable. Like, it's it's a noticeable difference, but if, if you're not that picky about your screen quality, you're not that, like, you're not a designer, you're not a graphic designer, you're not a video editor... The additional screen color gamut, it's not like a night and day difference. But when you see one side by side, you see this laptop screen side by side with something that's super colorful and super bright, more contrast. You just go, oh, I wish I had the, I wish it had a little bit brighter contrast, brighter nits, all that stuff. So you just, it's, that's kind of the way I would, I would think of it is uh, most gamers would be just super happy with the display. Like this would this would be a very very good display two years ago, and now it's just like a middle of the road display, right? Looks like PUBG is not interested in loading for us. So that's cool. Uh, Balds with another five dollar super chat. Thank you, man. Uh, Legion and Omen feel sweet on ports. The display I'm going to use it as a secondary for OBS and game on an external. Um, M18, however, has software vomit emoji. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would not recommend the Alienware series, uh, yet. I need to go back and retest the Alienware M16. I was actually like, I was actually thinking like, you know what? I should go ahead and return my Alienware M16 because I don't know if I'll get around to testing it because I've got like 17 laptops right now here. But then I'm like, you know what? I really need to go back and see if Alienware fixed their crap, um, software, now that it's been a month after release. So if they did, then it's going to be like, okay, I can re recommend this and all that, you know. Um, so this display, Red Dead right now is in partial windowed mode. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, Vlad asks, are there any real 18-inch mini LEDs coming out? Yeah, the Acer Predator Helios 18 has a, a mini LED. And yeah, it's super bright and vibrant. I got to see it when I was at CES. Um, so for some reason, Red Dead is 
not interested in going higher than 1080p. So that is super weird. Um, All right, well, we might have to test this at 1080p uh, for Red Dead. It's just acting up right now. So just know that it's a 1080p benchmark instead of QHD, <laughs> which I'm trying to test it at QHD, so it doesn't really help me right now doing this at all for the most part, but might as well just see the performance. How bright is the display compared to other laptops and games? I, like I said, it's a noticeable difference. Um, but it's not like this is a bad display. This, like I said, it, a couple years ago, this display would be rated like phenomenal. If you're pickier on your displays, then you, you might want to skip this one or use an external display. Yeah, Mitchell, I would not say the screen is crap. I would say the screen is just like, you know, it's in the acceptable. It's like the entry level of acceptable to me. Like it's it's the beginning of good. It's probably like seven, like uh, on my screen ratings, I think it'd be like a 70%. It's got good resolution. It's got good response rate. It's got good, um, decent color gamut and decent brightness. So yeah, this thing isn't even testing correctly. I think the game, oh, we're only getting six FPS. I think this thing is actually loading Red Dead in our, based on the integrated GPU. I don't know, that's super weird. We're definitely not utilizing the correct GPU. Um, okay, so let's go. Let's see if we can get red. Let's let's open up graphics. We'll try to do a quick. We'll try to do a quick fix on this, but it may not like us. We want to do the forty ninety, so we're going to select forty ninety in the drop down here in the graphics settings in Windows, and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, then we're going to skip Red Dead. I've had so many problems benchmarking Red Dead this year. Like half the laptops, it doesn't even want to run. Does XMG pay for shipping during repairs? That's a good question, Tom. Uh, do you know? Why would you play games at 16 by nine, Mitchell? I'm I have yet to test a game that doesn't support 16 by 10. It's just we got this weird issue with Red Dead right now. Unless it's bugged. But we obviously have been able to do 16 by 10 in the past with uh, Red Dead. So, All right, so we're going to hop into Shadow of the Tomb Raider then instead. Exclusive full screen, 240 hertz, quality DLSS, highest settings, ray tracing on ultra. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Give us a tech. A lot of games out uh, cut off the sides on 16 by 10 aspect ratio since they're a constant height or non-constant width. That's going to really depend on the game, but interesting. Elden Ring hates 16 by 10. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that just in the vast majority of the games, though, it's a non-issue. But there will be some, I guess, where it will be an issue. And the only the only uh, displays this year 
that are going to be um, perfect blacks are going to be mini LEDs or maybe OLEDs. But um, okay, so our settings are looking good. Let's go ahead and run this. XMG says, I'm pretty sure you pay for shipping to Germany. We pay for shipping back to UK. But we assist you with the paperwork and customs. It's handled by the support team. I don't have a good FAQ article on that. Interesting. All right, so taking a look at our performance here, our GPU is at a good starting temp at 64 degrees. CPU is 76 degrees. 2460 on our GPU clock. The GPU clock is at an insane level, especially considering... Look at our wattage level. We're not even doing the full 175 watts here. Maybe because we're being CPU bound a little bit. Probably because we're being CPU bound a little bit. But our CPU is doing a lot of wattage, 104 watts. And it's still only 86 degrees so far. I wonder how hot it would get, though, in a long-term test. Uh, Benson Harrison, I am testing this with the Oasis cooler. That is correct. Uh, Mitchell says that you should test um, going to the same spot in the game with 16 by 10 then go to the same spot in 16 by 9. And you'll see more on the screen on 16 by 9 than 16 by 10. Uh, that is entirely going to depend on the game engine and the optimization of the game. Because I know that Fortnite players uh, were switching to 16 by 10 aspect ratios on purpose. Because they wanted more vertical viewing re real estate, right? When you're in 16 by 9, you can see more horizontally. 16 by 10, you can see more vertically. So um, that's just typically how it's going to be. Wow, over 300 FPS starting. I think that's the first time we've seen a 300 at the start of this. How loud is the Oasis pump? So right now I can hear the Oasis pump over the fan noise. If I hold it right next to the Oasis pump, you'll hear it. But where I'm sitting right here, it sounds like a laptop that's on like medium low fans is basically the, the sound I'm getting, but it's definitely a different type of sound. It's more of an audible, like reverberating sound, right? Where it's not as much a whoosh sound. Um, that said, I may not have everything perfectly optimized for the pump and everything, so. Um, Compared to typical, like my typical benchmarking where I use like max fans, this is overall definitely quieter. Um, but like I said, it's a different type of audio that you're getting from the pump rather than fans. King Dragon says, wish we got a scar with Ryzen 7945HX. Yeah, that would have been interesting. 173 for our average FPS. Bonkers. That is really good. Um, wow. Okay, so 173. Do I have Shadow of the Tomb Raider? I do. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 151 on the scar, 18. 169 on... The GT77. So this got four higher than the GT77. Very, very good. Witcher 3. Then we've got CSGO, Apex Legends, and Hogwarts. Uh, Mitchell, you say that Fortnite benefits from wider aspects, not taller. Uh, that's not what streamers were doing, though. That's interesting. I, the streamers that you watch, they'll artificially, even on a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, they'll, they'll put it, it's so dumb, but they'll, they'll change it so that everything is squashed with a higher, taller aspect, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, just to fit more on the screen and see higher vertical height. Um... 
I don't know. Maybe it changed, though, because that was a couple years ago when I was playing Fortnite. All right, so we're on Ray Tracing Ultra Preset. DLSS on quality. We're going to go to display. Frame generation is on QHD plus at 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This card's tale begins near White Orchard. If my dear friend Gerald of Rivia A question, please. How much does this reduce extra cooling or 400 euros for the XMG Neo laptop? How much does this reduce the temps? I think is what you're trying to say. Um, so that's an interesting question. Um, I think, I think, uh, we'd have to actually do a long form bacon test to find out the more precise numbers for that. Okay. So here we are, Witcher three. We're running around, we're getting everything loaded in all the textures, always stuttery at the start. And then we're going to run back and get our benchmark started. All right, so uh, here we are. We're going to go ahead and do our test now. Right now... Our GPU clocks aren't getting that high, which is interesting. Our performance, though, is very good. It's interesting how our wattage is almost never going above 170 in anything. Any of these tests, nothing over 170. It's always just uh, like 170 on the dot or lower, like 165 to 170, it seems like. Okay, so 118.89, that's excellent 1% lows. Uh, let's see what we got on the Witcher 3. Uh, we don't have the Witcher 3, we have to go to, I'm curious what we got on the Witcher 3 for the Blade 18. Let's check the Blade 18 score on the Blade 18 benchmarks here. Uh, Cause the Blade 18 I think had the higher score on this one. There he goes, this guy's running right there. Witcher 3. And scooting forward here, let's go. So the Blade 18 got 113, it looks like. And the memory clock, you can see it, we're doing 2100 megahertz on the GPU. So, um, this has higher boost clocks to the to the GPU, and 113, so five more FPS here, as well. Um, so, if you can see that, that's the Blade 18 right there's benchmark result 113.47. Our one percent lows were also much higher here, so five percent, five percent or five more FPS and higher one percent lows at the same time. So definitely a smoother uh, gaming experience overall. All right, uh, let's see here. So CSGO, let's do that next. Okay. One for basement, one for rooftop lounge, <laughs> what? Which one is the temperature of the GPU? The temperature of the GPU is at the very bottom of the display today because Afterburner didn't want to utilize it. Vitamin K says, uh, or Tom says there's about a 20 degree drop on the GPU temps. Interesting. We'd have to actually test it, but that's what XMG says. And just know that, you know, Sometimes you got to trust the, the actual test rather than what the company says. Not that XMG lies to us. I don't th I think the XMG usually provides pretty good information. All right, so we're doing full screen. Got our console enabled. We need to turn on net underscore graph 
three. All right, so, and we, we are still going to do Time Spy, but we're doing that at the end. And then we'll do the wrap-up after a few more games. we got, like, five more games to go, I think. All right, so here's our FPS. This is uh, at least largely a CPU-based game. Um, whoa, it's interesting. In the top left, the FPS counter is saying, like, 900, 800. This down here is saying 600, though. A bit different. Is the frame metal or plastic? Um, it looks like the keyboard deck is like a rubberized material. The top deck is metal and the bottom deck is metal. I'm thinking the middle deck here though is plastic. Is that right, Tom? And the back of the the back rear part of the laptop's also uh, plastic, where the ports are. So it's a mixture of metal and plastic on this laptop. But the, the rigidity on the laptop itself was excellent. It had very little flex. Tom says Brandon got it right. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very, it's a very, uh, I think it's a very well-built laptop overall. I don't see any weak points, and I think the hinge design looks like it's gonna hold pretty well for a long time. Uh, does anyone know how good or bad the cooling in the Aura 17H and 17X is? So, uh, Demeter Rider, I've got a link to an uh, Aura 17H review, at least, uh, on my laptop list. But I've got an Aura 17X coming in. XMG said they're going to ship it to me in about a week. So it'll take a little longer than that to actually get here. But... All right, so we got 559. 559 for our test. That is excellent. 559.5, so I guess 560. I think that's the highest we've ever scored. Um, so once again, let's go over here. So CSGO, 513. GT77 got 548. So that is uh, 11 FPS higher than the GT77. It's been interesting. I think the GT77's only won a couple games. They won um, Dead Space, and I'm not sure if it won any other games. It got close on a couple other games, I think. But uh, I think the Neo17 so far has won more games uh, for highest performance than uh, Lost. So that's very good, obviously. Um, okay, so we've done this one, this one, this one. Time for Hogwarts. Hogwarts is going to be an interesting challenge. So, <sighs> Hogwarts is a, brings most laptops to its knees because it's got, uh, uh, hold on. Sorry, my, my live stream turned on. Um, so the VOD turned on. Anyway, the Hogwarts is extremely demanding on the CPU and GPU. So very interesting to see what we get with the water cooler. And it might be a good it might be a good game for us to test um, our CPU and GPU temps with the water cooler after five minutes, and then disconnect the water cooler and see what we get for our CPU GPU temps after playing for five minutes. What do you think? Let's do that. Yeah, we'll do water cooler on, water cooler off um, type of test for gaming to see what kind of temp temperature drop we can get. This time there's no loud fans. That's right. This is definitely quieter overall, though the water pump is still audible. Compare this with the Asus. So the primary difference, the biggest difference between this and something like the SCAR 18 or the SCAR 16, especially the SCAR 16, the display is way better. Um, the display is the biggest weak point of this chassis, I think. That and the membrane keyboard. The membrane keyboard is, is bad. Um, the CPU temps, I feel like... I feel like the CPU temps 
are it, it provides good performance, but the temps are pretty high, higher than what we saw on the ASUS as well. Uh, the ports on this are way better than the ASUS laptops, though, and the performance we're getting on this laptop is with the water cooler at least is definitely higher than what we saw on the scar series right we're getting higher fps without a doubt um it seems to be at least so we need to turn on ray tracing we'll have to restart this all right um hold on I pressed the wrong button to exit. There we go. All right, so uh, we're going to restart to get ray tracing enabled. And um, so the other differences between the SCAR and this, this offers a mechanical keyboard, the Neo 17. The mechanical keyboard on this, I think, would probably definitely be a better typing experience than the SCAR series if you're going to type on the keyboard a lot. Um, the touchpad between both of them, I think, is very similar, though it's a little bigger on the Neo than the Scar. And I think if you're going to use the laptop on air, I think the performance on the Scar is likely to be noticeably better. But if you're going to use the laptop with the liquid cooler, you're going to get noticeably better performance with the Neo 17, like probably like. Like it's going to be at least very competitive with both laptops on air. I don't know if it'll be better or worse necessarily. It's going to be in the same ballpark. And I wouldn't be surprised if the SCAR were to, to potentially beat this, but maybe not even. Maybe even on air, maybe the Neo would still beat it. I don't know. That's, that's more testing required to say that one way or the other, but it's going to be very competitive. But on, on the liquid cooler, you're definitely getting additional performance with the Neo 17 compared to the SCAR. I would say like based on what we're seeing right now, I'm thinking like, five to seven percent additional performance um is most likely at, at the ballpark maybe even up to eight or nine percent additional performance um compared to the scar series with the liquid cooler uh can you unplug the water cooler at the end of the stream and try to prepare to put it in your bag so we can see how practical it is so i already did that uh, I already did do the disconnect and unconnect the cooler earlier in the live stream to show you how easy or hard it is. All right, so I'm setting the FPS right here. Let's go ahead and see how much stuttering we get as we run through here. Wow, our GPU clock is extremely high, though we're being CPU limited pretty clearly. Um, only 76% GPU utilization. Our GPU temp... Our 1% lows are phenomenal. Like, I don't know if, did Hogwarts update itself again or something? Um, what? We have had no stuttering at all in Hogsmeade. Maybe Hogwarts finally fixed itself or maybe it's something about this laptop, I'm not sure. All right, so running through our Hogsmeade test here, let's see what we get. So far, this is the first laptop I've ever tested where Hogwarts did not stutter. We've had zero 1% stutters so far today. So 108, 56 for our 1% low. Extremely smooth gameplay the whole time. Uh, that is amazing. Again, this could be a driver update and this could also be a Hogwarts game update, right? We're on the latest drivers. So don't necessarily say that we needed more testing, right? There was literally a driver released like a day ago. So um, here's the results from Hogwarts Legacy. The SCAR 18 got 93. The GT77 got 78 though. I think that is a bugged score. So you're definitely gonna get more than that on the GT77 with updated settings or something or driver or something was going on there uh, for that game. And uh, so overall, phenomenal performance in Hogwarts. Wow. All right. So with, with the cooler so far, we've been in Hogwarts for, um, what, like a few minutes now? Our temps are pretty stable in like around 65 degrees. Let's see. I'm gonna give it like another minute and then we'll go ahead and shut off the water cooler and let everything run on air, okay? 
And then we'll see if we get any additional stuttering. We'll retest it to see what our FPS difference is. All right. Uh, what about the screen of the XMG? Did I not? Oh, I forgot to change the screen. <laughs> oh my God, sorry guys. So do I need to retest this? Let's go ahead and retest it since I needed to retest the screen. So, uh, all right, so here we are. We're in Hogwarts. We've not had any stutters at all. We're gonna do another run through here. Hogsmeade. This is the best experience I've had so far in Hogwarts Legacy on a laptop. I don't know if it's a driver update or what exactly it is, but it's very smooth. 111.59. So we got three more FPS that run than we did in the first run. Um, very interesting, though, result. Uh, very good performance here. And most importantly, the 1% lows are, are so much better. 370 nits isn't that good. I would say it's good, but not very good or great. You know, it's at the beginning of acceptable levels. Uh, like really 300 nits is the beginning of acceptable. 370, I think, is a little bit better than acceptable. Like, But if you're picky or you want a great screen, then yeah, this is not a great screen. I wouldn't classify it as a great screen. All right, so... So here's our temps. We're like, for our CPU, we're in the high 80s. We tapped 90 a second ago. 66 degrees on the GPU. There's our, there's our rough um, temperatures. Now let's go ahead and alt tab. Let's go to the control center. Let's go to the XMG Oasis. Let's disconnect that. That shuts off the Oasis, okay? So now I have no more Oasis going on in the background. We're gonna let the fans kick on. Our temps are climbing right now. We were at 65, now we're at 74 on the GPU. You know, our performance hasn't really dropped that much so far, maybe a little bit. It's impressive. Daniel says the best screen to go to people to pay the most, in this case, it's certainly Asus, MSI, and Razer. Yeah, the, uh, the bigger, the bigger, um, the most improvements, for the screen, like the biggest, the best screens are gonna to go to the, the laptop manufacturers that can guarantee the highest volume. And that's why those big manufacturers like Asus, MSI, and Razer can guaranteed get the best screens. So it's just, it kind of sucks, but you know, uh, Uniwell, Tongfang, they don't move as many laptops as some of those other companies. So it's harder to provide the high-end screens. Um, Scar 17 or Neo 17? Uh, I've talked about this a few different times, BMW 40, 49. Uh, go back in the live stream like 10, 15 minutes. I did kind of a breakdown on it. All right, so uh, uh, looking at our temps now, we've broken 90. We're in 93 on our CPU. We're at 80 on our GPU now. Keep in mind, we are elevated a little bit on the back of the laptop, right? Could you try again? Siri talking to me. Um, interesting, it's kind of becoming nighttime now. I don't really want it to be nighttime. We'll just flip to, we'll flip it over to daytime again. Mini LED has bloom, which is horrible. Yeah, Mini LED does have bloom. It's true. Uh, Joe doing random. XMG laptops are awesome so far. I think they would do pretty well in the States. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, the fans are so silent. How is this possible? Because of the... It's the Right now, the fans are in the process of spinning up and getting louder and louder, basically. And the fans are not in Max Fan. Is there a way to do Max Fan, Tom? I don't know if you're still here. Okay, there, I see you're still here. Um, 
So I want to point out right here that our CPU wattage did go down. We were doing, I think, 80 watts, 80, 90 watts on the CPU in this Hogmead, Hogsmeade section. And now we're only doing 53. So that's a pretty big difference. And I wonder how much that's going to affect our FPS, right? So if we start running around, we can probably go ahead and do a, a new follow-up test now. You know, it doesn't seem like there's very many people on the street now. I'm going to do wait one more time. Get it back to midday. Wait. Now it's nighttime again? Man, everyone thinks... Everyone in Hogsmeade must think I'm a bum just sleeping right there in the middle of the road. Um, <laughs> okay, so there's some more NPCs. All right. Good stuff. All right. So... Impressive so far. I gotta say that the laptop is not that loud. The fans themselves in fan only mode is not too loud right now. Uh, Tom says, Max fan is currently hidden in the custom profile panel. If you go to BIOS and put Max fan on the performance key next to the power button. Uh, okay, so with Max fans, that's usually how I test the laptops. But we're going to do whatever is the, the default highest fan profile, basically. All right, so doing a run through right now. Let's see what we get with a run through now that we're on air. I got to say, our performance is still very good, even on air. So our performance did not go down on air versus liquid. Just the temps changed. Ooh, that is juicy. I love that. Oh, I love that a lot. Okay, so let's compare performance real quick. Um, in Hogwarts, we got 93 on the SCAR 18. 78 on the GT 77. So um, I'm curious to see what would we get on the GT 77 if I retested it now with all the latest drivers and everything, but... Still, very good performance, and our temps are really not bad. Our GPU temp is getting a little spicy in the getting into the low 80s there. I saw 81.9 there a second ago, um, but it's not like it's horrible. Let's check HW info. So. Memory junction is at 100, but I believe that can go up to 110 at the highest end. That can get hotter than normal. Our hotspot is at 88. So it's definitely spicy temps right now in Hogwarts. All right, and you guys want to see what happens when we turn this sucker back on? Uh, let's go ahead and flip the liquid cooler back on. I hear it going now. Let's launch the temperatures. Hopefully we can get down back to, what was it, 60, 65 degrees? Would be cool to show the memory OC and the BIOS setup. Go to control, uh, control center, custom profiles, automatic GPU over, check the memory OC checkbox, reboot and hold F2 key and check out the BIOS. Okay, interesting. Um, Shall we do that before we do the next game? All right, so we went from 81, now down to 70. Notice our CPU boost went up back to 30 more FPS. You gotta love that. <laughs> or sorry, 30 more watts. We were at 55 or so, 50. Now we're doing 90. Our GPU temps are now in the 60s. That did not take long to cool down the laptop. Nice. Gotta love that. Okay, so that's good. Um, all right, we'll go into the BIOS now. Tom wants us to go check out the BIOS. Uh, all right, he wants us to check out. So first he wanted... Go to... Control center, 
performance, custom profile. Okay. Looks like custom profile is grayed out right now. Um, I'm guessing. The CPU benefits indirectly from the water cooling, yes. Um, oh, okay, so now we have to go. It's. I think. I think we maybe have locked up the control center. It's not responding. Let me reopen it. Okay, so now it doesn't let me click it. Custom profiles is not letting me click it. I'm clicking it, and nothing's happening. Um. And also our overboost just disappeared. Do we need to go into uh, BIOS right now? Let's go into the BIOS. All right. Um, so we're shutting down. We're going to press F2 to go into the BIOS. There we go. All right, I'm tapping F2, I press the power button. There we are. Okay, so here's the BIOS of the XMG Neo 17. You can see that with this BIOS was released on 3.3. i9-13900HX, 16 cores for efficiency, uh, 8 P cores, 16 threads, 5600 on the memory frequency. Going into the advanced BIOS section here, we've got uh, lock, FN lock for F1 through 12. If you enable this, it switches it so all of these functions, that's nice. You can switch it so all these functions right here become the primary function of the F1 through 12. I would actually prefer that. Um, passive cooling mode, when enabled fans will stop at very low temperatures, when disabled fans will keep running at low speed. Active performance cores, active efficiency cores, so this is you can disable the efficiency cores or the performance cores. Virtualization, enable, disable. VDM setup. Network settings, profiles and recovery, performance button, operating mood. We're operating mode is an overboost. Performance button does fan boost. Is that what you're telling me to hit, Tom? You want me to go to the performance button and then click fan boost? Or what do you want me to do? You want to switch that to fan boost? Is that how we do max fans? Fan boost plus water. Gotcha. Uh, is that is fan boost going to give us maximum fans, basically? I think that's what the setting is, right? So right now you can switch it to be dynamic or GPU only. Fan boost equals max fans, correct. Okay, cool. Performance button is the key next to the power button. Got it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and save changes and reset. You like that BIOS better than the ASOS BIOS? Um, they seemed about the same to me. I feel like MSI is the BIOS that has the most options right now. Checking Windows Hello. Windows Hello looked me in a little quicker that time. That's good. Um, I feel like with this webcam, oh, we haven't really checked out the webcam. Let's check out the web camera. 
Okay, here we go. All right. There's the webcam, folks. It's uh, the colors. I am sunburned like crazy or something. Um, uh, let's see the photos. That's what the photos look like after the fact. Yeah, this is um, maybe the worst webcam. I don't know. The Scar 16 is competing with this one for the worst webcam of the year so far. I would definitely encourage you guys to get a better webcam. Um, the Windows Hello is nice, though. But the color reproduction on this is really bad. I feel like you guys could improve this with some software updates, if I'm being honest. Because, um, it, yeah, it looks like I'm literally just sunburned. So I'm on, my, I'm on the screen, so... Yeah, I would encourage some improvements there. Um, okay. Let's see here. But I'm glad you at least have a webcam and Windows Hello. That's nice. Uh, okay, we're going to try the Max fans. Let's see it. Fan boost is on. Can you hear it? I'm going to put you next to the water cooler and the fans. So you can see the mic right here. We're only a few inches away from the fans right now. I'm gonna turn the fans on. They have a nice low whooshing sound to these fans. They don't sound bad. All right, uh, excellent. So we've now, these and these fans are not as loud as like the GT77 fans. Oh my goodness, they're so much quieter. Um, okay, so we do have everything connected. We're in auto mode now with XMG Oasis. We're going to need to open some apps again. Afterburner. Uh, very nice. Uh, did we get... We still need to play Apex Legends, I believe. Is that the last game we haven't tested? Yeah, Apex Legends, I think, is our last game. And then we're doing Time Spy. And we're going to see what we can get with the overclock on this guy. Even with the pump off, water will pull heat away. Yeah, but not very much. Just a tiny bit, maybe. And it'll, it'll do that whether you have a pump attached to it or not. Um, and then once that... Once the water in the heat pipe is fully um, saturated, it's not going to make any difference anyway. It doesn't take long for that to happen, I don't think. Uh, yes, the best webcam right now is on the Blade 18. It's, it's a very good webcam. It's not amazing. I still think it, uh, Apple webcam is a little better but it's in the same ballpark as the apple face cams on the macbooks so you at least don't feel like you're you know it's you don't feel like it's awful you know uh we want auto sprint enabled we want to crouch with shift we want to change all of that and we need to change our sensitivity to one Wow, our afterburner display is not showing everything as it needs to. Interesting, now that we rebooted, it's got a bunch of different things in here for afterburner. I think now it's not detecting that uh, the Intel is even being used. And we have GPU temperature. Awesome. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so we are on for video. We are on. Everything's on high right now.
And let me go ahead and move this over. I'm gonna utilize this XMG trackpad. Let's go ahead and see what we can get. We'll do one set with maximum settings. Oh, well, hold on. We gotta exit this and we gotta go and set our FPS max to be higher. I really wish Apex could go higher than 300 FPS, but it can't. You close the integrated GPU, which I think on my Asus laptop can't do. Yeah, um, the reboot applied the disable Optimus hard setting that I set over. Okay, so we had to do the, yeah, we had to do a restart to turn that off. I thought that when we did dedicated GPU only mode, it was able to change that setting on the fly, but I guess you need to do a reboot still to fully turn off the integrated GPU, just like the Asus Armory Crate GPU ultimate mode. Portable curved display laptop. I don't think we're gonna see a curved laptop display because that's not very um, conducive to sliding into a backpack sleeve. You know, it's gonna be like, <laughs> you know, that's just not gonna be good. Is there someone else in this? Okay. All right, here we are. Oh, I love this. This is a great display for gaming. Esport, there's like no ghosting on this display at all. Even on maximum settings right now, we're hitting 240 FPS limit of the display. That is phenomenal. All right, so doing 240 FPS. Let's switch everything to low, except for textures. I think that's the highest we've seen on max settings in Apex Legends. So we'll do it. We'll do like 15 seconds of it again now that we're at max uh, low settings. Honestly, it's so hard to tell the visual difference from low to high settings in this game. But um, yeah, so here we go. Man, this is so good. I think people are gonna love this, at least for esports games. This is gonna be like a phenomenal gaming laptop. Notice our temperatures are also really, really good in Apex Legends right now. And let's go ahead and go back to lobby. Let's hop into a game. Gun Run is super fun. Love gun run. Yeah, the water cooler is enabled. All right, we're going to turn the we're going to turn the sound of the game up to max. Man, the temperatures you get with the liquid cooler and Apex are like desktop level. 57 degrees on the GPU, 68 on the CPU. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, Nahemic audio profiles. All right. I'd have to redo the speaker test to really show them.
So Gun Run is this really fun game mode where You get a kill, it gives you a new gun, basically. And I've got the speakers turned up now. Phenomenal. Got the devotion now. <laughs> we're just going through these kids. It's awesome. All right, we'll see if we can go help our teammate out. Did you steal my kill, sir? We're already halfway to the points needed to win. That's insanely fast. <laughs> My abilities are offline. So, if you guys can't tell, but it makes a huge difference when I play Apex on a good laptop or a good display. It's enormous, the difference when you're doing a competitive game like this. Oh, got me. I'm not a big fan of the shotguns. All right, so we got eight kills real fast. We're leading the game in kills this round. That's awesome. All right, so what a fantastic Apex Legends experience. Um, it does not get better than that for gaming laptops, except maybe going with a 480 uh, hertz display um, in, like, the Alienware M16 or M18. That's probably the only display that might be better for esports, um, or at least noticeably better. Like, you might get better color gamuts, but in terms of response rate and tracking your enemies, it's really phenomenal here. All right. So um, Tom would like me to show you the Nahimic. I've, I've shown you guys these several times before. Um, let me go ahead and just try loading up a song real quick and showing you guys the audio difference when you have Nahimic in a couple different audio modes. So right now we have effects on in Nahimic, and let me back it up a little bit here. All right, so we'll play Roar by Peter Spacey. It is a huge difference enabling the effects, but the effects were already enabled when we did our tests. But you can tune the, the, the sound a little bit uh, in those Nahimic profile settings. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but when we did our audio test, it was already enabled. So just know that uh, this, this is a way to adjust your bass, your treble, and all of that. Um, but yeah, this was already enabled when we did our audio test. It, it does make it sound so much better. It really does improve the audio. Um, I own about 20 devices from XMG. I can wholeheartedly recommend XMG. Gizmo, how do I buy one of these laptops uh, you're reselling? So Don Don, if you want to become a channel member and support the channel, what you need to do is hit the join button, you become a member, and then... Uh, 
you'll go to the community tab after you've become a member and you fill out the waiting list. Uh, there's a waiting list application. Uh, and basically that tells me what kind of laptop you're looking for. And then one of my guys is going to contact you and follow up on which laptop you want to buy. That's basically the way it is. I've got about uh, eight or nine laptops I'll be reselling that I, I only resell the ones that I'll be recommending. And you'll be able to choose out of those uh, laptops that I'm reselling if you're interested in buying them. And you basically are paying just a little bit more than retail cost to get that. Okay. All right, so time spy. It is time for the spy, the time of spy. I am excited. Let's find out what we can get. All right. Just confirming our profiles here. We're in overboost mode with XMG Oasis enabled. All right. Uh, let's get the camera re-situated here. All right. So uh, here we go. We're doing our time spy run. Even with the water cooler, the CPU sometimes reaches 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, 90 degrees Celsius, though, is not going to damage anything. And basically what they're trying to do with the overboost is uh, increase the performance to the maximum limit. So like in Hogwarts on air, we were doing like 55, 60 watts to the CPU. But then in overboost with the water cooler enabled, we were doing like 90 watts. And the temperature on the CPU was only a little bit hotter in air. But you're basically getting like the 25 additional watts out of your system by doing that, right? So looking at our time spy initial here, we're at 65 watts, 75 watts to the CPU, 169 watts to the GPU. Interesting enough, I don't think we've seen 170 watts yet, or 175 watts to the to the C uh, to the GPU almost at all tonight. And yet the performance has been phenomenal. Uh, it's been really good. Out of the box here with no overclocking in afterburner. We're doing 2250, which is about the same clock speed we saw from the GT77 Titan out of the box without any additional overclocking. Now, I know that there is some overclocking going on from the overboost mode from the control center. So I'm curious to know what uh, kind of overclock we got going right now and how much can we improve this? Can we take this uh, back up to all the way up to like, say, 2400 clock on the GPU? We'll see. Do you think the GT77 will ever be offered with the AMD 7945HX? I don't know, Gore-Tec. Um, I don't think they've historically have gone with an AMD option for MSI. But I, I think right now the availability is the issue with the Ryzen CPUs. Um, only the top, top, top brands right now are actually being able to sell any of these Ryzen chips. Um, and I think, I think a lot of manufacturers would consider doing Ryzen options if there was more supply. There's just a limited supply that AMD is putting out. So only a handful of brands are actually getting the chips to even make laptops with them. So we'll have to see. So out of the box, uh, Niebuhr, you're right. We got a 500 OC on the memory clock. Um, it's normally 9,000 on the memory clock, and it's uh, 9,500 out of the box. So hey, look at our look at our wattage. Now we're doing 175 watts for the GPU. Finally, <laughs> it's uh, that's the the first time I think I saw 175 up there. So that's good. It's plus 150 to the GPU core already. Interesting with water okay interesting yeah 150 should be pretty stable i've yet to see a laptop that can't do uh plus 200 so i don't know what we're gonna get here i'm not sure 
what do you guys think? What's it going to be? Uh, I'm thinking like 2250. 23,000. 23,300 stock. Our CPU score, 18,600. That's the highest CPU score from TimeSpy we've seen. And for the GPU score, that's the highest stock score, but this also has a pseudo overclock basically being applied. Um, so right here, let me go open this and make this a little bigger. Our user interface, let's go one, let's go just, let's make it as big as possible. All right, so uh, let's up this OC. Let's see if we can do 225, all right? And let's do a memory clock. Uh, let's see if we can do 1,000, all right? Almost all, almost all the laptops I've had so far this year have been able to do this, but maybe this won't be able to do that. We'll see. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to do 24,000 given that we're already OC'd one plus 150. Probably not. I don't know. 23.3K is really good though. That is really good. You should test in a bench 32 after configuring the BIOS. What do you why would we need to why would we need to test in a bench again? XMG Oasis is not a product for everyone. That's clear from the get-go. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, you're gonna be it you're gonna it's gonna be hard to convince a casual user that it's worth all the hassle dealing with it. Now, uh, we bumped the clock speed by 75 and look at us, we're doing 2310, 2325. That's actually noticeably higher than what we had uh, earlier in the previous run. We were doing like 2200 something, like low 2200s. So our 75 OC is actually doing a pretty good job of boosting us up. Um, I'm pretty sure the GT 77 though was boosting closer and tapping into 2400 on the GPU clock. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see the final score. I mean, really this, the clock speeds don't tell you 100% of the story. So it'll be very interesting to see what we get. Um, are we in max fans right now? Oh, we are not even on at max fans right now. Let's let, I've got max fans going now. But uh, we are on the water cooler, so that's even better than Max Fans, realistically. Max Fans R23 and Time Spy. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, we haven't done the Max Fans with R23 and Time Spy together. Well, it depends on what you guys want me to focus on, because I only have so much time. I have to end the live stream here pretty soon. Real Bilal, um, I am looking for a, a live stream editor to edit down, help edit down live streams. I've got one right now. It's just I've got a lot of live streams and a lot of things and, and to help me make shorts, basically. Um, those are the two things that I, I'm looking to have some help with. Niebuhr says, some people push their score above 24K in the graphics score. XMG should send you a shunt modded one to break the record. <laughs> LOL. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know exactly how XMG has done their OC. Factory OC compared to, say, something like the SCAR. But it's definitely something in the... It's definitely increasing the, the, the core clock and frequency more than what most RTX 4090s are. And some would describe it in a similar mode as being like a uh, shunt mo a mod or whatever. For And that would be true for the GT77 Titan too and the GE78. Um, a lot of manufacturers kind of did that. But it seems like XMG was able to do a more extreme version. 23,683. All right, we got to do it again. Let's try it. Let's see if we can do... I don't think we'll be able to do too... Fifth, let's, can we do 260? I don't think we'll be able to do 260. I think we'll be unstable at 260. 
But let's find out. Seems like it's undervolted with its power draw and clock speed ratio. Yeah, the exit, the, the RTX 4090, it kind of feels like an undervolt to do what it's doing. Uh, would you recommend XMG cooler versus Legion 7i or SCAR 18 all maxed out? So Benson Harrison, I'm going to do a summary of my thoughts on the laptop here in a moment. We're, we're getting closer and closer to me doing my summary. Um, I suppose I can do my summary while doing a max fan test with Cinebench R23, and then we can look at the results. Um, we'll try doing a 10-minute test. I don't, I, Niebuhr, I don't focus on the other 3D Mark applications um, just because I think it's redundant. I think TimeSpy does a good enough job and people f uh, are familiar with the TimeSpy number, so it's easier to compare. Either it's undervolted or the power draw readout is incorrect. Who knows? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I mean, to get these clock speeds right here with this power loadout, it's like pretty much, uh, pretty much impossible. <laughs> Only a shunt mod would show an incorrect wattage reading. LOL. NVIDIA has joined the chat. <laughs> oh my God. You guys are funny. Um... Yeah. Yeah, it's it. I really wish uh, Nvidia had let the forty ninety go up to like say two hundred watts or even higher, because clearly some of these laptops can handle the wattage, and the temps, at least. Um, so it feels a little silly that they didn't. So the fifteen inch version would have the same performance. Uh, so. There is no 15-inch version of this water-cooled laptop. You have to go to a 16-inch. It's either Neo 16 or Neo 17. And the 16-inch version would have slightly lower performance on the, G, uh, on the CPU. But it would be very similar on the GPU, I believe. Basically, the CPU performance uh, is just a few watts less. Um, at least that's what Tom's initial discoveries in performance had, but it's very minimal difference. They do not want to have laptops close to the desktops. Well, sure they would. They just want to sell graphics cards. They don't care if it's in a laptop or a desktop. They just want to make money. So they would they would totally do it if they could. People are working on cracking the VBIOS for the 4080 and 4090 to allow higher TDPs. Yeah, but you're gonna <laughs> if they if they actually do crack the TDP. Um, that could be a real problem. Um, are, are we having stream issues? Because it's uh, Uger is mentioning stream issue. I don't know. Let me know if there's any problems. Um, okay, so ooh, we still got a higher score, 23,833. Ooh, I really want to crack. I really want to crack 20. I really want to crack 24,000. This is the highest we've ever gotten. 274. 275? Can we do 275? Can we do 280? Uh, 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 let's, all right, let's, instead of doing a whole run, let's just do a custom run and see what we get. I would love to crack 24K because I've yet to crack 24K on any of the laptops. All right. Um, you know, maybe maybe with the water cooler, we are able to keep the clocks high enough. Like, we are actually seeing increased clock speeds here at 23, 
2340, 2370. So when I increased the clock speed, it actually did boost up. And so far, we're not seeing any artifacting with this much overclocking. That's incredible. Let's try three. Oh, I think we just crashed. It did not like 23. It did not like 3000. We have crashed. Dun, dun, dun. Disable. Do you really think, do you think uh, you're talking about core memory isolation, right? This is the setting you're talking about, right, Tom? Uh, the page you're trying to access has no supported features, is not available. What? Is it labeled differently? Because normally I've been able to disable core isolation, but it's not even coming up as an option here. Twenty four K is possible. I don't know. I don't know if it is. Uh, I don't know that it is. I think we're going to crash if we try one more time. Let's try one more time. All right, this is the last the last attempt. We'll see if we get through this run or not. <laughs> Am I smelling something? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh Maybe it's because VTX is disabled in the BIOS. Maybe. Looks like VBS is already off. Okay, gotcha. I believe latest Windows updates swallowed it. I don't see it in my system. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Niebuhr says, so MSI Titan and these laptops get better clocks than the SCAR because they're all shunt modded. But Tom will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> I don't know if it's technically exactly a shunt mod, but it's in the same vein as a shunt mod, it seems like. What is shunt modding? Um, basically, it's modifying the laptop. There is a crash. We are crashed it. Um, so basically it's modifying your laptop to run at additional wattage and clocks. Um, and it, were combined, it requires a combination of software and sometimes usually hardware changes too. So, uh, all right. So we're gonna do 150, we're gonna exit, there we go. All right, so um, we'll let Cinebench R23 run in the background while we do the wrap up on this thing. All right, 10 minute test. 
We're going to start that. I'm going to scoot this out of the way. We're going to switch camera angles. Get the lights going again. Awesome. All right. So let's talk XMG Neo 17. All right, what are the pros? What are the cons of this laptop versus the competition? All right, uh, arguably the biggest pro to this laptop, and we'll just go right into saying it, incredible performance on the GPU side while still having very good CPU performance. We're not seeing the best CPU performance that we've ever seen in a laptop, but it is, it is, it is still very good CPU performance with phenomenal GPU performance, right? Um, the nice, another nice thing about this XMG Neo 17 is I think the software support and the uh, desire by the manufacturer to maximize the user's performance. So you don't always get that. A lot of these manufacturers these days are trying to push like medium, medium high levels of performance or like not quite maximizing the performance because they're worried about the laptop's uh, reliability or making it easy for the users. XMG is saying, we want to provide the users with the most possible performance, even if it's a more complicated setup process. Um, like setting up this water cooler is not as easy as just opening a laptop and turning it on. So I, I really appreciate that XMG is giving advanced users more of an option uh, in, this, in this category, right? Um, is the fans at 100% with the water cooler? That is correct. You were hearing maximum fans right now in the background. Um, and we're eight minutes into the test now. Performance seems to be about the same though. We're not seeing much difference. Um, okay, so what else? I'll, well, we'll go, we'll go over the 10 minute test here in a moment. We're gonna keep going. All right, so the keyboard on this, the membrane keyboard, downright terrible. I would, it's, it's not good. It is the worst keyboard I've tried, even cheap, even worse than the, the, the $1099 gigabyte keyboard over there. It is, but that's partially because of the layout being it not being a US keyboard. So it's very frustrating for me uh, using it. But even the, just the key feel on this membrane keyboard is like, it feels like a keyboard you'd get in a thousand or $800 laptop. Um, the rigidity on the chassis though is phenomenal. And when you combine the rigidity with the Cherry MX keyboard option, it's gonna be so much better. And I don't really have that ability to show you that MX keyboard, the mechanical keyboard, but you can look at my uh, CES coverage if you wanna take a look at that keyboard, uh, the mechanical keyboard. It does feel good, it has a nice clicky feel to it, and it is much more premium. Definitely, if you buy this laptop, don't get the membrane keyboard. Um, it's a 330 watt power brick. The port power brick is like a medium portability wise. We took a look at that at the beginning of the live stream. Um, the overall system as, as a whole is a bit thicker, a little bit chunkier than say like the SCAR series. It's in the same ballpark though of size as like the SCAR 16 and SCAR 18. Um, when we saw performance, when we tested performance on air, not using a liquid cooler, we saw, still saw some very good performance overall in Hogwarts. Um, but the temperatures were like about 15 degrees, 16 degrees warmer when on air and our CPU wattages did drop significantly when we were on air in the dual load. So um, performance though was still fairly good, uh, still very good. The actual running through the town was, it didn't really change the RFPS much. I think it was like, like almost the exact same, like one or two FPS difference. Um, so it's gonna, your mileage is gonna vary a lot whether on air or on the water cooler really is gonna make a big difference or not. I'm thinking just in general, this is gonna perform better than the SCAR series, whether it's on air or with the liquid cooler, so, or the, air, you know, the water cooler. Um, the display on this, 372 nits, uh, about 100% sRGB coverage, about 80% of the P3 color gamut. It's not as bright, it's not as vibrant, and the contrast ratio on this is not that high either, right? It's not even a thousand. So know that images are not gonna pop as well, they're not gonna be as vibrant, but from an indoor gaming perspective, this display is sufficient to have a good experience. 
I would still say this is a good display. I just would not say it's a very good display or a great display. I really think great displays this year are utilizing 500 nits displays uh, with 500 nits with closer to 100% of the P3 color gamut. Um, and if you were to see this display side by side with some of the uh, mini LED displays, uh, you would really see a big difference in, in brightness, contrast, color gamut, all of that. Um, and when you're paying this much money for a laptop, you're paying more for this for a lower quality display, but a higher GPU performance level. So I, I really think this laptop is gonna cater to people that um, are not very picky when it comes to their displays. Um, and the, yeah, so um, we, you know, we, when it comes to, when it comes to the display quality, um, I think the majority of gamers are gonna be happy with this, but they're not gonna love it. You know, they're gonna be like, it, it's good enough. That's what most people are gonna say. Even if you're video editing or doing basic Photoshop stuff, you can still do that stuff on this display. It's just not gonna be as color accurate or as vibrant. And if you're gonna do stuff outdoors, you're gonna need something more portable, I would really recommend another laptop that has a brighter display and has higher color gamut. Um, all right, so that's enough about the display. Uh, port selection on this laptop is very good overall. We got three USB A's. We got uh, some nice ports all around. The, the odd port is the extra mic port for the two, three and a half millimeter. So if you have the, the double prong headphones, you can use this laptop with that. Uh, we've got a full size SD card reader. I've not tested the speed on that. Um, I suppose I could test it real quick. I got myself a UHS-2 card here. I don't know if this is a UHS-2 SD card reader. I'd like to find that out actually real quick. Um, we've got to wait for Cinebench to finish up first though. Um, but for the most part, most people I think are gonna be very happy with the port selection on here with very minimal complaints all around. Uh, the only thing is with the liquid uh, cooler connector ports that basically takes away a potential USB-C port or maybe a mini display port or maybe both of those could fit on here without that liquid cooler. So uh, when you use the liquid cooler, you are giving up one or two ports in exchange for that. Um, in terms of portability, if you are planning to use this with the liquid cooler, I would say that uh, it's gonna be a little bit annoying having to deal with the water coming out, of, the potential risk of the water coming out of the laptop valves when you're just packing it from day to day. So I think the ideal person that buys this laptop wants to use this laptop mainly on a desk. Uh, they mainly are gonna use it, maybe they, maybe they move it at once a day at most, um, you know, maybe going from home to work and back, and that's it. And they maybe have, a, a, they have an Oasis at work, they have an Oasis at home, or maybe they just have an Oasis at one of the locations. Um, and the, or, or the ideal person is just occasionally moving it once every few days or something. Uh, that's the kind of person who's gonna love this kind of laptop setup. Now, I gotta say the pump was a little louder than I was expecting. Um, it, it, the pump itself kind of sounds like a laptop on like medium low fans. It's not as quiet as a fan, uh, as a laptop on low fans, right? Like my Blade 18 is quieter than the pump when it's on like medium low fans. So, um, if you're looking for a extremely quiet perspective, like you could go with something like the Blade 18 instead and have a better acoustic experience, or you could just honestly use this laptop with air cooling on medium fans and probably get the same performance as the Blade 18 um, and get a similar acoustic performance. Because these fans, these fans, when we're on Max fans, really aren't that loud on the Neo 17. I'm pretty impressed actually with how quiet the fans are. Um, so, and I, I really don't think you don't, you, I don't really, I really don't think you have to get the, the water cooler if you want to get this laptop. I feel like there are a lot of advantages to just having this laptop without the water cooler. Um, cause then you don't have to worry about the water in, in the, the cooler loop. You still get the ultra high levels of performance. You don't get as cool attempts and it is a little bit louder with the fat max fans on this thing than the water cooler is by itself. But it's not like the water cooler is completely silent either. Um, now, Cinebench R23 is about to wrap up, so let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, results. 
So our average clock speeds also four gigahertz for the 10 minute test. Our temperatures are basically the same still with max fans, 85 degrees, 86 degrees, 93 degrees average on the package. Our CPU wattage averaged 144 watts during the 10 minute test. So let's see what we get for our 10 minute test with max fans enabled and the water cooler enabled. Let's see. 28,400, uh, quite a bit lower for some reason. I have no idea why though. Maybe some process is running in the background. That's unexpected. We got 29,999 uh, when we first ran it. So um, all around, can I recommend this laptop? I think yes. Even without the water cooler, I think yes, I can recommend it. But there's just, I think the biggest drawback to this laptop is it just doesn't have the premium display. It doesn't have a premium webcam. Um, you need to upgrade the keyboard and it's already a pretty expensive package overall. Um, so it's, it's going to be, I think, I, th I, I, I think there are people that are going to get the XMG Neo 17 and they're going to love it so much. It, it's going to be their favorite laptop ever. All right. They're going to love the water cooler. They're going to leave the laptop mostly on a desk and they're going to get better performance than nearly every other laptop in their games. Okay. The other people um, that are going to be happy with the Neo 17 are going to be the ones that are not even going to get the, the water cooler. They're just going to be focusing on the air cooling of the laptop. They're going to pay a little less because they don't have to pay for the water cooler. They don't have to deal with the hassle of the water cooler. Uh, and yet they're still going to get very good performance. So, and in that scenario, I actually, in some ways, I like the Neo better without the water cooler, which is weird. I was not expecting to say that, but um, <laughs> I know that's probably a little, a little uh, potentially off-putting or, or whatever, but it's, it's true. It's like the water cooler... For me, I would be worried about the water leakage in my backpack. I don't know. I that's the truth. So for me, if I were to if I were to use the XMG Neo 17, I think I would want to um, either have it mostly on a desk all the time, so you have to worry about the water leaking, uh, or you just don't connect the water cooler that often. I don't know. Otherwise, it's just it. I'm just concerned. Like it has warnings in the manual. Like I'm afraid someone's going to buy the Neo 17, put it in their backpack, water's going to leak, and then they're going to fry their laptop. Um, it's unlikely to happen necessarily, but it's a possibility. And it's definitely a concern of mine. All right. So we're getting 85 megabytes a second for our copy speed. All right. So... Overall, that's a pretty, that's a decent SD card reader, but like I get 250 on my Blade 18. So if you need a fast SD card reader, this is not a super fast SD card reader. Um, but it's still faster than using USB. USB transfer, I usually get like 40. Um, so it's still twice as fast as using the USB. All right. Um, okay. All right, looking at chat. I'm trying to think of anything else I want to say about the laptop. The webcam on this was bad. Windows Hello did work. It didn't work as fast as some of the other Windows Hello laptops, but it did work. Um, the trackpad on this laptop was very good, I thought. The trackpad uh, had a good experience. It's a good click. It's a large trackpad, and I like the fact that you can disable it or enable it with a quick double tap. Um, yeah, I mean... Can I recommend this thing? Yes, it definitely gets a recommendation, but you really got to make sure you're the right user for a water cooler um, for it, for me to be like, yes, this is the clear winner over the competition. So if you're an advanced user um, who wants to maximize the performance on their laptop, water cooler enabled does help reduce the overall noise profile when you're comparing maximum possible performance. I love that. Uh, that said, even without the water cooler, I still think I can recommend this laptop, right? Um, 
from a, from a perspective of overall sound, it's still a very acoustically quiet device with a high level of performance with decent enough ports, um, even with the water cooler taking away one or the two of the ports. Uh, it's still a good air-cooled laptop. I don't think that I would buy this laptop as my main laptop. I need a better webcam. I would prefer a thinner, more portable device. Uh, this is a little bit chunkier. And I, I think, um, but I think for someone who's looking more for a desktop replacement, moving it from place to place, they're gonna use the water cooler. Those people highly recommend this lap, I can highly recommend this laptop to them. You know, it's the same crowd of people that are probably looking at the GT77 Titan. Uh, and this costs significantly less than the GT77 Titan and still gives you similar performance and temperatures than the Titan does when Titan's in max fan mode, right? Um, the bigger issue with when you compare this with the Titan is that the Titan has better CPU performance um, with a higher bin CPU as well. So um, if you need the CPU performance, then I would still recommend the Titan over this guy. Overall though, this is still really good. Um, XMG says, or Tom says, the warnings in the manual are kind of a safety net for us to protect us from claims based on gross negligence. Uh, right, but that's also me as a reviewer. I have to take those warnings seriously, right? Because, um, like, I know that water does leak from this laptop a little bit here and there. And there is a decent amount of water in the water loop. It's not like it's nothing, right? There is some water in there. Um, and it's not that I can't recommend the water cooler. It's just I can't recommend this laptop to someone who's going to be disconnecting and connecting it all the time, you know, like, uh, and then traveling it within their backpack. If, if you guys could come up with some kind of attachment to prevent the water from coming out, that you have a high degree of confidence um, in the laptop being able to go be thrown into a backpack without leaking and destroying the laptop or, or damaging other electronics that you might have in the backpack with you, I would definitely be more inclined to recommend this combo to someone who needs something more portable. Um, but just that concern makes me hesitant about the laptop, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I like it. I like it. I just don't love it from my own perspective. The performance was phenomenal. This, this gave us some of the best benchmark performance we've seen in any laptop. Um, consistently competing with and beating almost all of the competition um, by a little bit. Uh, there's only maybe a, a handful of games like in Dead Space where we saw better performance from other laptops. Um, and that was a very GPU, CPU bound game. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you just take care of everything, then you will be fine. Daniel says, I've never had an issue with the Oasis water cooling. See, and I totally agree that if you if you handle the Oasis properly, you do every, all the things properly, you unplug it in the right order, you're careful with the water, you clean up any spilled water, um, you're mindful of all of that, you drain the, the heat pipe uh, before you get on an airplane or before you do an extended portability session with it, like taking it for like a cross-country road trip or whatever, then you're going to be fine with the Oasis. But I'm just, I'm just thinking about most people are casual enough users that they might forget sometime. And then you're like, well, then you went on the airplane and you're, it leaked all over everything. Maybe important documents even. Like you might have papers with your laptop. I oftentimes put papers with my laptop in my backpack. You know, there's different, there's different concerns though about it that I'm just like, I just want to make sure people know, right? I'm, not, I'm taking the warning seriously and I, and I, I am trying to give people a balanced perspective on it. I do think the XMG Neo is for a group of people out there that want to maximize their performance in a predominantly stationary place, or they're willing to do the extra work when they go to portability mode, draining the water out of it, um, or being mindful of not letting the laptop be near things that might, you know, get water damaged and all of that. So, um, yeah, X Michael says, uh, XMG, I want a good cooling. Give us a true 18-inch desktop replacement, chunky with four fans. See, that's part of what I'm thinking, right? Like, like, this is a true desktop replacement when you combine the water cooler with the laptop, but you still get the portability of when you want to take it with you sometimes. Um, I would love to see 
I would love to see a little bit even, I mean, this thing is thicker, but I feel like the space on the inside wasn't even maximized to the, to the maximum potential. Like you could put two more SSDs in this. Uh, you could even potentially do like a four sodium setup like you do on the GT77. Um, you could do way better ports than what we have right now on here. Uh, you could do better speakers. There's a lot of things you could do with the extra space on the inside. Um, it's already a pretty chunky guy. And, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I still feel like this thing could be better. It's still in a good spot though to recommend it to the right user. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Grinch has a question. Did you check the firmware 307 for the SCAR 18? Seems everything is unlocked and throttle stop. That is what I've heard. I have heard that uh, the new BIOS allows you to undervolt all the way to minus 80 and that potentially Intel and throttle stop is now working on the SCAR series. So I might need to re-benchmark or test a SCAR laptop at least quickly to see if they have fixed that or unlocked it. I've also talked to MSI about the GT77 BIOS problem where it's limiting the GPU to a maximum of 120 watts. And that is basically gonna be happening now anytime the GPU is in enabled. So um, if you're in optimist mode and the NVIDIA GPU is disabled, you should be able to go all the way up to the 200 watt limit now on the GT77 Titan again. Uh, and if you are in the Intel only mode, you should be able to go to that high again. But if you're in the NVIDIA dedicated GPU mode where the GPU is always enabled, the maximum they're going to offer is 120 watts. The reason they did this is they said that they didn't want the GPU and the CPU pulling a maximum of 375 watts at the same time because I guess they must have had some power adapter issues or something. I don't know. That's basically what they said though. So if you're wanting to maximize your CPU performance on the GT77 Titan now, you're basically going to need to use NVIDIA Optimus mode and make sure the NVIDIA GPU is not being utilized. And then you'll get the full CPU performance. Um, so, yes. Any other questions? Massa says, thanks for letting me know. I'd like the water cooling to be bigger and cover more of the internal cooling. The Oasis isn't portable. Might as well make the most out of it. That is true, Massa. I would love to see. Uh, I mean, I thought the cooling was really good uh, very impressive, but the thing is, it did not cover the CPU, and I think if it had uh, the loop covering the CPU, we would have been able to see better CPU performance on the, maybe on the same level as the Titan. Um, and I also think that it's a little sad that we don't have the option to do the undervolting. Intel undervolting would be huge with this laptop. We saw really good wattage levels, 145 watts to the CPU only workloads, and yet it's still. Um, wasn't giving us top end top tier performance, getting a little bit only over 30K because we couldn't undervolt it. Undervolting this year is huge performance gains for Intel CPUs. So hopefully we'll get undervolting support sometime soon. XMG says, in case the stream ends soon, thank you everyone for all the questions and comments. Feedback will be taken into consideration for the future product development. Talks about 24, 24 start now, that's right. So I'm really excited to see what XMG does for next year's version. I would love to see you guys either commit a little bit more toward the portability factor or a little more dedicate yourself to the chunkiness and just maximize everything you can do with this of the chassis this size. That's probably the, my biggest feedback to you guys. Um, and, uh, and really give us a better display option. We really need at least one display going to 100% DCI-P3 color gamut um, in the next iteration. Yeah, undervolting is a must. Yeah, undervolting is a must if you want to maximize the performance, definitely. Um, so we'll see. Uh, ben Benson Harrison asks, would you recommend this over the SCAR 18 and Legion Pro 7i? So the biggest difference I would say between the SCAR 18 is that it has a better display, 500 nits, higher color gamut display. Um, it's a bigger display. Uh, it doesn't have Windows Hello. Uh, this laptop has Windows Hello. Um, the actual performance numbers of the Neo 17 is better than what we saw in the SCAR 18. Uh, I have not tested the Legion Pro 7i yet. Uh, that one is also supposed to be factory overclocked, so we should see some nice performance numbers from the Legion Pro 7i too. Um, 
the tricky part is going to be uh, whether you, if, if you're the kind of person that wants to deal with the water cooling, you like the idea of having it and you're mainly going to keep it plugged in against the wall or you're willing to deal with draining it if you're going to take it more portable, then I, yeah, I would recommend the Neo 17 um, as a great option to consider against the SCAR 18 and Legion Pro 7i. Uh, so, but if you're someone who wants the display quality, the SCAR 18 trounces the display uh, like really beats the display on this and the Legion Pro 7i. The Pro 7i and this display are not that much different. The Legion Pro 7i is just a little bit brighter on the display. It's the same color gamut um, between the Legion Pro 7i and this laptop. So um, from a display perspective, there's not that much of a difference between the Neo and the Legion. Uh, whereas with the SCAR, the SCAR 18 display is noticeably better in color gamut and brightness than either of these laptops. Uh, thanks to Tom from XMG for sharing all his time with us. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I think it's very late. It's later, very late in the night. Uh, and thank you, Tom, for coming by and helping make sure that I didn't mess up anything with the water cooler. <laughs> and I hope you don't mind me giving my honest opinion because I always try to tell the truth the way I see it as best I can see it. So um, I, I definitely can recommend this product, but it's got to be to the right user. Um, and I can recommend the product without the water cooler too. Uh, and then I can, I think I can recommend the product without the water cooler to more users. So, uh, to a broader user set, but the tricky part is, uh, price to performance and the premium feature set makes this product, I think a little bit less desirable compared to the competition, given the lower display quality and the higher price. Like if the price, if the price of the product was very low, let's say, uh, like the Omen 17 has a 4090 for 2749, right? That is a phenomenal price for a 4090. If we can, if you guys could, if like electronics or you guys could match that price for a 4090, that's pretty phenomenal, right? That, that would be a, a big enough draw for me to be like, yes. But if it's significantly more than that, then it leans me to, to focus more on recommending like the Omen to those people seeking the budget performance. And then in the higher performance category, um, there is a se segment that it should definitely get this over the other laptops, but they're the, that, that's the ultra high performance enthusiasts that should buy this over the other laptops because they don't care about the display as much as they care about the GPU performance. If all you care about is the GPU performance, boom, this thing is probably the best laptop for you. But if you're the kind of person who wants a premium mobile, you're always packing it and going places, I just don't, and you want the highest performance, like this thing is just, you, you lack those premium features while still paying the premium price tag um, to get the laptop. So, yeah. Okay. I think that really sums up everything for this laptop uh, pretty well. And it's definitely something that I can recommend for the right person. That's it for this live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks to Tom. Uh, and thanks to all of you that have stuck around throughout this uh, how long has this live stream been? Um, I think it's been four hours and 22 minutes. This is the longest live stream of the year so far. There was a lot to do with the water cooler though. So it makes sense. See you everyone. Thank you much for tuning in. Bye-bye.